The Protector Chapter 551 The mood took a sharp turn as a somber expression appeared on Timothy's face. But this must be kept a secret. I'm meeting Abigail tomorrow, so a prickly. Matter such as this must never be disclosed to anyone. Don't worry, Mr. Caesar. The place we arranged is very discreet. Timothy shook his head. That's not enough. It must be completely hidden. I want to make sure that nothing will go wrong. Derek immediately chimed in, I have an idea, Mr. Caesar. I think I know just the place. It's a club called the Abyss. That club can be said to be the most hidden place in the whole of South City, and we can only gain entry through special connections. Not just anybody can enter. Seeing Timothy's interest perked, Derek continued, many big figures in Quebec choose to discuss matters there because everything stays within those walls. No. One outside will ever hear a whisper of what goes on inside. Then, the abyss it is. Timothy nodded in approval. No problem, Mr. Caesar. We all have connections in the abyss. Let's book the entire club tonight, shall we? Melvin and the others were all smiles. In the South War Zone. Sir, it's time to leave, Alfie said as he opened the car door for Levi to get in. All. The arrangements in South City have been made. There were several people standing behind Levi. The captain, Mortimer Lambert, was of course among those people. The rest comprised of Mike Pence the Commander-in-Chief of the South. War Zone, two Deputy Commanders-in-Chief Hank Damon and William Stewart. As well as several Chiefs of Staff. Everyone was dressed in casual wear, obeying Levi's order to keep a low profile. Otherwise, the sight of a group of men in military uniform eating in public would scare the living lights out of people. Has the meeting point been set? Levi asked. Yes, it's at a club called The Abyss, sir. This club is known for its secrecy. Because it's located in a remote area in the suburbs, many people choose to have their secret meetings there, so we won't have to worry about anyone spying on us. South City's authorities realized the sensitivity of this matter, so they chose the abyss. But the food will be self-prepared, and nothing too extravagant. Besides, everyone will go Dutch, so there won't be any unwanted problems, Alfie clarified. M.M., good. I see that they were quite thorough in their planning. Levi nodded. Impressed. Meanwhile, the leaders of South City were all gathered in the abyss located on the outskirts of the city. However, everyone was dressed in a very low-key manner. In fact, their attire was so casual that it made them stick out like a sore thumb in the club. Tim Cronin, the leader of Quebec, asked, Has the god of war, I mean, Mr. Garrison, arrived? The mayor of South City, Stephen McKay, nodded in response. Yes, sir. Alfie just called and said that they're on their way. They should be here soon. That's good. Tim wiped the sweat off his brow. Why do I feel nervous? He mused. We're all nervous too, sir. We've been sweating way before we even arrived. All of South City's officials took in deep breaths, fretting over the god of wars. Imminent arrival. They had gone to Jesse Nielsen for advice earlier due to his experience with the God of War. Yet, Jesse had only given them two words stay calm. However, it was easier said than done. They were literally drenched in cold sweat due to the level of anxiety they were feeling. Before long, Levi and his party of people arrived at the entrance of the abyss. Vroom, vroom, vroom. Just then, the sounds of engines revving disrupted the silence. More than ten sports cars sped towards their direction, all coming to a sudden stop in front of the abyss. It was Timothy and the other young heirs. Mr. Caesar, welcome to the abyss. After alighting their respective cars, 
everyone crowded around Timothy and ushered him towards the abyss. Hey! It's that guy, Mr. Caesar! Derek exclaimed the moment he spotted Levi. The Protector Chapter 552 Immediately, everyone fixed their gazes on Levi. Is that really him? Timothy asked, frowning. That's him, Mr. Caesar. That's the guy with really good driving skills. A few of. Derek's followers said hastily. In a split second, Timothy's expression changed abruptly. I don't give a damn. Who he is, but as long as he has any kind of contact with Abigail, get him out of. My sight. As a member of the Prince Gang, this was how Timothy normally handled things. In the most arrogantly self-assured way possible. Derek exchanged a look with his followers before immediately saying, As you wish, Mr. Caesar. Striding forward quickly, Derek caught up with Levi and his group to intercept them. Hey, where are you going? Stop right there. However, Levi and his group just ignored Derek's shouts. Hey, hey. Are you all deaf? Didn't you hear what I just said? Hold it right there. Derek suddenly raised his voice loudly, throwing his hands open to block Levi and his group from moving further. Displeased expressions appeared on Alfie and Mike's faces, as well as the other military officials present. South City was their territory. Thus, they could not believe that there were people here who still dared to block their path, especially when the god of war was traveling with them. How embarrassing! Mike and the others were visibly annoyed. If the fool were lucky, he would only embarrass himself in front of the god of war. But in the worst case scenario, this same fool might end up losing his job over charges of negligence. Mike and the others were raring to reveal their actual identity to this hapless fool. But Alfie stilled their protests with a wave of his hand. What's your business? Alfie asked in his deep voice. Derek ignored Alfie, looking directly at Levi instead. He pointed his finger at him. You, come over. I have something to tell you. His tone of voice was an unmistakable order. Completely thunderstruck, Mike and the other eight personnel in charge of the South War Zone could only stare dumbly. More than a little fear filled their hearts. Does this fool have a death wish? He's literally hollering at the god of war. Not only was Derek shouting and ordering the god of war around, but he was doing that in front of all the highest-ranked commanders of the South War Zone. Right then, Mike could not hold himself back any longer. His voice burst out in an angry shout. Do you know who he is? I don't care who he is. The only important thing is that Mr. Caesar of the Caesar Family wants to see him right now, and he's going to do just that, Derek said. While smiling coldly. While it was true that Derek did not know who Levi was, but he still had Timothy. Caesar to back him up. Hence, Derek was confident that no matter how prestigious Levi's societal standing was, there was no way he could be more powerful than Mr. Caesar. Mike, Alfie, and the other officers just exchanged disbelieving glances. The entire situation was ludicrously embarrassing to the point of being hilarious. They would not have any dignity left after allowing something unthinkable like this to happen in front of the god of war. But the jarringly comical side of the entire affair was that these rich heirs had somehow managed to offend the god of war himself. And why should I listen to you? Levi's smile was equally as cold as Derek's. Why you, this is Mr. Caesar we're talking about. The Caesar family practically controls Southampton, and if you know what's good for you, you'll come with me. Derek found his embarrassment turn into sputtering anger. Suddenly, Timothy spoke from somewhere behind Derek. What's happening? Derek? Can't you handle even something as minor as this? Timothy's taunting jabs just made Derek angrier. You have three seconds to come with me. One, two I said stop. 
don't leave. Before Derek could make it to three, Levi and his group just shoved past him to enter the abyss directly. Hey, are you all deaf? Hold it right there. Derek could shout himself hoarse, but Levi and his group did not have any intention to acknowledge him. Seething angrily, Derek looked like he was going to charge into the club after. Levi. Wait. Timothy walked over slowly, followed by his people. Ah, Derek, aren't you supposed to be quite influential in South City? Timothy's face was a mask of disappointment when he looked at Derek. At that moment, Derek just felt his anger spike to new heights. He clenched his fists tightly, vowing that he would make Levi regret the day he was born. After they entered the abyss, the anxiously waiting leaders of South City immediately stepped up to welcome Levi and his group. But upon actually seeing Levi, everyone looked at each other in disbelief. They did not expect the mighty god of war, who made the world tremble with his very existence, to be a young man. However, that disbelief quickly turned into respect. The Protector Chapter 553 Levi was both agreeable and approachable, setting all of them at ease. It was no wonder that Jesse Nielsen, the leader of Northampton, just told them to treat the god of war as they would any other normal young man. Even the boss of the abyss, Orion Sinclair, followed behind them in awe. He was genuinely both excited and on edge at the same time. These were definitely the biggest shots his club had welcomed ever since he started operating it. These people arrived in a group of more than twenty. Even the god of war was here, a fact that still made Orion rub his eyes in disbelief. Outside the abyss, Derek faced a dilemma. So, they entered the club. Aren't you and your men supposed to be the heavy hitters of South City? Just surround this place and force them out, now. Timothy said coldly, lighting up a cigarette. At once, Mr. Caesar, Derek said hastily. Watch this. At this moment, Channing, Melvin and the other rich heirs just laughed unkindly. Then, they approached the entrance of the abyss. Mr. Jacobs. The manager of the abyss came out to welcome them personally. Immediately greeting them respectfully. He recognized these rich heirs as regulars at the abyss. Melvin took a look into the interior of the club. I need you to do two things. First. Get your boss out here. We're reserving the entire place tonight, and I don't want anyone else coming in. Two, kick out all those who went in just now. In addition to that, Silas did not even bother to pretend to be respectful as he roared, get going, now. Usually, if the rich heirs visited the club, the staff of the abyss would scramble to comply with their orders immediately. However, the manager actually hesitated today. I'm sorry, Mr. Jacobs, but we're unable to arrange that for you and your friends. Tonight, the manager said carefully, feeling backed into a tight spot. Oh? What's the matter? Melvin demanded as his expression changed abruptly. If he did not get his way, it was akin to being humiliated in front of Mr. Caesar. Someone else already booked the abyss today, Mr. Jacobs. I'm sorry, but you didn't notify us earlier, so our hands are tied. The only thing we can offer you now is a wave on you and your friends bill the next time you come to our club, the manager apologized in a low voice because he did not want to offend the various rich heirs. But when Melvin heard that the club was fully booked by someone else, he immediately flew into a temper. He kicked the door of the club forcefully, making a loud crash. Do I look like I'm broke and need you to wave my bill? Yeah, get out of here. We don't need your charity. The other rich heirs shouted. Angrily. I'm telling you we don't care who reserved the place tonight. Kick him out and. Tell him to get lost. We're booking the abyss today. You better do it now, or don't. 
blame us if things get unpleasant, Melvin snarled. I'm sorry, sirs, but we really can't do that. The other party already booked the club in advance. We have to follow procedure, the manager said helplessly. Looking miserable. Right then, a ringing slap resounded through the air. In a flash, the manager held his face in shock as Melvin slapped him. Useless scum. In South City, you play by our rules. Now get your boss out here. And kick them out. To add insult to injury, Silas sent the manager crashing onto the ground with a single kick. Do you know who that is? That's Mr. Caesar, the oldest son of the Caesar family. The Quasi Royal Clan of Southampton. I'm interested to see how you're going to continue operating your club if you're planning on offending him, Channing said. While pointing at Timothy, who was standing nearby. Still holding his face, the manager gritted his teeth tightly. With all due respect. Sirs, no matter what you do, we still won't allow you to do that. I've been too effing nice, apparently. Beat him up. With that said, Melvin and the others proceeded to thrash the manager, giving him a vicious beating. Not even the few security guards present were spared. All of them were beaten black and blue by the rich heirs. The resulting commotion was loud enough to the point where even the patrons inside the club could hear it. At the same time, Levi and the others had just taken their seats. Listening to the praise of the various big shots about his club, Orion was in a good mood. Boss, there's trouble at the door. Big trouble. One of his staff shouted. Breathlessly as he ran up to him. What's wrong? Orion demanded immediately. A few of the rich heirs are beating up our people outside, the staff member. Clarified quickly. As soon as the words left the staff member's mouth, Tim suddenly stood up. The leader of Quebec slammed his palms onto the table loudly and growled. I can't believe something like this is happening under our noses. I'm going to take a look. The Protector Chapter 554 What do they want? Orion hurriedly asked the staff member. They seem to have something against this gentleman here, boss. The staff member shot a trembling glance at Levi. What? Orion's shocked exclamation perfectly encapsulated the unbelievable bombshell. That was just dropped on all of them. Hearing the staff member's words, the crowd descended into a furor. Everyone had a look of disbelief on their faces. Who in South City has the guts to do something like this? Who dares to pick on the god of war? This is madness. Challenging the god of war? It's true. Just now, when we were outside they already came for the general. ERM, Mr. Garrison, Mortimer said quietly. Yeah, that's right. They challenged Mr. Garrison without any reason. The other. People from the South War Zone all started to pipe up. Levi remained silent, but anyone who knew him knew that he was slightly angry. How dare they? Tim was beyond furious. The other leaders of South City, such as Stephen, were infuriated as well. Their eyeballs fairly bulged from their sockets in outraged surprise when they heard that. It was just outrageous an unscrupulous case of bullying like this happened right under their noses as soon as the god of war arrived. How would the god of war regard us after this incident? How are we going to live down this embarrassment? It was infuriating, and the thought alone made their anger skyrocket. Uh, boss, it's not only that. They also want you to kick everyone out of here. The staff member added, cringing slightly. The gathered crowd was now thunderstruck in addition to their shock. Their tempers flared even further. Come on, let's go have a look at this. We'll handle this matter seriously, Tim. Barked. Stephen and the other leaders followed behind Tim with dark expressions. Clouding their faces. Their anger was palpable. 
it was their first meeting with the god of war. Hence, they were determined to make a good impression, and yet something like this happened. Their reputation was going to be shot to pieces it was utterly humiliating. Outside the abyss, the brutal beatdown was still in full swing. Melvin and the others already drew blood from the managers and the security guards they were beating up, but they showed no signs of stopping. At this rate, the manager and the others were going to be beaten to death soon. Flanked by the crowd of rich heirs, Timothy watched the sickening violence. Without a single change in his expression, he said coldly, let me be clear that this situation doesn't exist in South Hampton. I'll destroy anyone who dares to challenge me back there. It was obvious that Timothy was reprimanding the various rich heirs of South City. For doing a poor job. Wham! Without warning, Melvin's fist sank into the manager's face, causing bright red blood to splatter everywhere. Get Orion Sinclair out here right now. Mr. Jacobs. Why are you doing this? Let's have a reasonable discussion, shall we? It's no good for anyone if we continue like this, Orion said hurriedly as he ran out to mediate the situation. Only when Orion came out, Melvin stopped whatever ruckus he was causing. Then he looked at Orion coolly and said, I said we're booking the entire club. Today. So get rid of the people inside now, or I'll tear your club down. Nevertheless, Orion remained calm. Sirs, as my manager already explained. Earlier, someone had booked the club before you, so please come back another day. I promise you that everything's on the house on your next visit. Let's not antagonize each other now, Ed. Piss off. Melvin roared. We'll be reserving this club today, one way or another. Mr. Caesar came here personally today. Are you going to disrespect him just like that? The Caesar family. Orion took a step back in surprise, expression changing. Abruptly. He never expected the leader of Southampton's Prince Gang to come in. Person. On a normal day, the abyss would have rolled out the red carpet to welcome him. But today was no ordinary day. The patrons currently inside his club were in an entire league entirely. As a matter of fact, they were so powerful that he shuddered just thinking about them. Channing patted Orion's face mockingly with an icy smile on his face. I'm asking you this one last time. Are you going to disrespect Mr. Caesar? Everyone turned expectant eyes on Orion. If the man remained silent, they were. Dead set on tearing down his club tonight. I'm sorry, but not today, Orion said firmly, schooling his expression back into an implacably calm mask. Fine. You've said it yourself. Melvin bellowed furiously. Then the abyss doesn't need to exist any longer. Grinning twistedly, Channing made a call immediately. Hello, I'm Channing. Jake Men. I want you to bring more men to demolish the abyss now. Do you hear me? Right now. The Protector Chapter 555. Orion retorted immediately, Ha! Huh. I'd like to see which one of you has the balls to tear down my club. Who gave you the right to do this? However, Melvin, Silas, and the other rich heirs just laughed uproariously. Listen. Up, old man, we're the kings in South City. We call the shots. Well, that's some spine you've got. Since when are any of you the highest authority in South City? A cold voice rang out from the interior of the club. Look, someone's got a death wish. Melvin sneered coldly. You've got the guts. To stand against us. I'd really like to see which idiot is still challenging us. Seeing the sudden situation, Orion immediately said, Sirs, please just leave. None of you can afford to cross the people inside the club. Forget Mr. Caesar of Southampton, I'm pretty sure nobody else can afford to. Provoke them, 
one of Orion's staff members added helpfully. Naturally, the staff of the Abyss hoped that the situation could be resolved. Peacefully without any conflict. But the more they tried to defuse the situation, the more Melvin and the others. Grew furious. You're kidding us, right? What do you mean by we can't cross them? I couldn't. Care less about who is inside that club. We're kicking them out today. Evidently, Melvin and the others had made up their minds. The sudden sound of fast-moving footsteps filled the air. Following the chorus of footsteps, a crowd of people appeared at the entrance of the crowd. Who's making trouble here? Tim's expression was a thunderously dark cloud. We are. You got a problem with that. Melvin and the others challenged. Insolently. Seeing how rude and arrogant the rich heirs were, Tim and the other leaders were practically shaking with anger. Since when did South City allow bullying riffraff like this to exist? Tim growled it. Stephen. Stephen hung his head. It was my fault. There's only one thing to do about tumors like this. Remove them immediately. Tim bellowed loudly. Such bravado. Who are you, anyway? Timothy smiled coldly and slowly walked. Forward. He turned that frosty smile on Melvin and the other rich heirs. All of you are. Rather useless as well, aren't you? None of you can even handle ordinary people. Like these. Feeling their faces burning at Timothy's accusations, Melvin and the others. Wished fervently just to vanish on the spot. Who are you? Stephen asked icily. You might get a heart attack if you know his identity, old man. Listen carefully. This is Timothy Caesar, the heir of the Caesar family, the quasi-royal clan of Southampton. Derek said loudly. Scared now. Derek added nastily as an afterthought. However, a moment later, Timothy belatedly realized that the people facing him did not even bother to react to Derek's statement. And that made his blood boil. How can they still ignore me after they know who I am? All right, but do you know who we are? Stephen asked suddenly. Caught off guard, Derek and the others could only frown. You? You do look a little familiar. The big shots of South City made appearances on the big screen or in the news. Regularly enough. However, Tim and the others were dressed casually today, like any other normal civilian. Although they could not put a name to them, Derek and the others still found them annoyingly familiar. Timothy's frosty smile did not change. Very well, then. Do tell us who you are. Gentlemen. Let's see if you can shock me with your identity. Yet. Yeah. I'd like to see just who you are. Tell us your names if you have the guts. Two. Melvin and the other rich heirs urged tauntingly. Is there anyone in South City that can still scare Timothy Caesar? Of course not. A few years ago, perhaps Scott Yates and the Triple Group could still put up some form of resistance. But anyone else aside from them could not be even considered an annoyance. Much less an actual threat. Listen up, then. My name is Tim Cronin. Tim said angrily, taking care to articulate each word clearly. Tim Cronin? Who the hell is he? I've never heard of him. You're right. What nonsense is Tim Cronin anyway? Melvin and the others exchanged confused glances. They truly did not have any idea of Tim's identity. Tim Cronin is the leader of Quebec, Orion supplied. He was fighting the urge to cover his face with his hand. It was at that moment, all of Melvin's thoughts were interrupted abruptly. Orion's words left them all thunderstruck, shocking everyone present. The Protector Chapter 556 Melvin gaped soundlessly. Derek was stunned. And Silas, well, he was staring in shock. Everyone was rendered speechless with their eyes bulging out of their socket. While frozen in place. Even Timothy found himself struck dumb. 
the cigar he was smoking dropped to the ground from his limply gaping mouth. Tim Cronin? This is the Tim Cronin the leader of Quebec? I'm the deputy leader of Quebec, Woody Emile. And I'm the head of the police department, right Hector? I'm Stephen McKay, the mayor of South City. I'm the deputy leader of the South City, Corey Madison. My name is Thorne Keen, and I'm the captain of City Patrol Unit for South City. One by one, the gathered crowd stepped forward to proclaim their identities. Loudly. SH asterisk T. When Timothy and his group heard them announce their various titles, they almost lost their minds. Derek and his cronies were even more terrified, shaking like a leaf in the wind as cold sweat beaded on their forehead. Just then, another crowd appeared at the entrance of the club. Timothy and his group recognized them as the entourage that accompanied Levi. Earlier when they entered the club. Hey, we couldn't let you all have all the fun when there's a commotion out here. We're here to join in. Guess what? I'm Mike Pence, Commander-in-Chief of the 300. Thousand troops stationed in South War Zone. The sound of people choking in horror grew louder. I'm his Deputy Commander-in-Chief, Rex Hansen. I'm the military strategist of the South War Zone, Hector Christensen. I'm Mortimer Lambert, captain of the South War Zone Regiment. And I'm Alfie Steele, commanding officer of the Iron Brigade Dragon Legion. What the... Silence descended over the crowd of people. Suddenly, a few loud crashes were heard. After Alfie and the other military officers had made their identities and titles known, Timothy and his friends just sat weakly onto the ground in their shock. Their legs trembled as their bodies went limp, making them fall onto the ground. In a very undignified way. Humiliatingly, most of them even wet their pants. Dark stains spread across the front of their pants and felt warm in the cold air. The rank stench of urine started to assault the noses of everyone present. And no. T this can't be happening. Never in their wildest dreams did Timothy and the other rich heirs ever expect that they were crossing paths with the top leaders of Quebec. Not one, not two, but more than ten of those leaders. All of those leaders were gathered here, with not a single person missing from their ranks. It was definitely a huge taboo that Timothy and his friends just broke. They were in serious trouble now. A high thin sound was coming from Derek's throat. He was out of his mind with fear, frothing at the mouth and convulsing periodically. It's too goddamned scary. Faced with such powerful opposition, no one sane would choose to take their opponents head on. But we met them and did just that. How could we be so stupid? The rich heirs here did not just stand their ground stupidly, but they arrogantly Challenged those big shots as well. Every one of their cocky words just became a death warrant that they signed willingly. Too late to do anything now, the sudden realization dawned on them as to why Orion and the manager would rather risk offending them than bow to their demands. It turned out that they really could not afford to cross the people reserving the club today. Simply put, they were in deep sh asterisk t now. Right then, someone started bawling their eyes out in a very undignified manner. Even on a good day, the rich heirs here were not exactly strong-willed men. Now, faced with this situation, most of them were terrified out of their wits. Melvin and the others just burst into tears, sobbing grossly. If they had pissed off anyone else, they could probably still salvage the situation. But now that they crossed these high-level VIPs, even their families could be in danger. If the elders at home ever got wind of this incident, they would probably beat them to death to teach them a lesson. Timothy was fairly petrified as well. He was so scared that his entire body was clammy with cold sweat. If he was involved in an incident like this just as soon as he arrived at South City, his standing in the Caesar family back in Southampton was also in danger. At that moment, Timothy could already imagine how his grandfather, Richard, was going to tear him to pieces. 
nobody would reasonably expect the rich heirs of South City to be lying on the ground wetting their pants. If the people of South City were around to witness the sight, they would need to pick up their jaws from the ground. It wasn't every day in which one could see the rich heirs of South City have the living daylights terrified out of them, after all. But unfortunately for these rich heirs, they had the misfortune of meeting people even more powerful than them. Do you have any idea who the people inside the club are? Tim continued. Bellowing at the terrified heirs. The man inside is. Alfie interrupted Tim smoothly before he could reveal anything. Someone you. Really can't afford to offend. Yes. None of you should offend him, one way or another, Tim said calmly after. Realizing his slip. Hearing Alfie's cryptic statement, Timothy and the other rich heirs quickly concluded that the man inside the club was on the same level as Tim and the rest. In short, it was yet another man who could make their lives a living hell if they offended him. The Protector Chapter 557 None of them expected the mysterious man inside the club to be the god of war himself. This was the man who intimidated the rest of the world into towing the line with his presence alone. If only they knew the man they just insulted was the god of war. Some people would literally be scared to death just knowing that. A peaceful resolution, Mr. Cronin, Alfie reminded him. Despite everything else, Levi wanted to stay incognito. With that, Tim acknowledged the statement with a nod. He turned to face Timothy and the rest again with a warning look. All of you can leave now, but rest assured if I ever see any one of you acting out of line again. I'll deal with it personally. However, the war zone commander-in-chief snorted disapprovingly. No, I don't think so. We can't let them off so easily. Get their parents to come and pick them up. Stephen agreed that's a good idea. It's normal for the parents to apologize on behalf of their children's wrongdoings. What? Once again, Derek and his gang were scared out of their wits. If our family knows the trouble we just landed ourselves in, we're gonna be dead. Meet. Right then, Stephen's secretary promptly started contacting their parents. No one leaves without my permission. Tim warned before going back into the club. Sprawled on the ground, Timothy and the other rich heirs could only stare. Blankly, waiting for tears that refused to come. Nobody expected things to take such a turn for the worse. It was beyond horrifying. Soon, a few luxury cars arrived on the scene. These respective cars were from the Jacobs family, the Jakeman family, the Ferguson family, and the Davies family. The heads of all the rich families had arrived, and all of them were angry at the trouble their unruly children had unwittingly brought on them. Stephen's secretary had already explained the process of the entire incident to them, sparing no detail. Aside from being thunderously angry at their progeny, the heads of the families were terrified out of their wits as well. Of all the people to offend, these rascals offended these people. They could ruin our families with just one word. As soon as they got down from their cars, the heads of the families made a beeline for Derek and his gang. Thump! Mr. Davies sent Derek flying a few meters backward with one kick. Thump! Yelps pierced the air as the other rich heirs were promptly taught a lesson by their respective parents. Soon, they were shrieking in agony as their parents beat them mercilessly. They anguished shrieks almost sounded like pigs being sent to the slaughter. All the heads of the families present were aiming for the kill. Once they got their hands on any of their sons, nothing else mattered except for a vicious beating. They did not show any mercy at all. When Timothy saw blood splattering across the ground as the rich heirs of South, City got their behinds kicked thoroughly by their parents, he felt fear squeezing his heart tight. If his grandfather, Richard, ever found out about this incident, Timothy would be 
spending at least a month in bed after being on the receiving end of that volatile temper. Let's get out of here, Timothy said quickly, slinking away discreetly with his followers. In the end, the rich heirs of South City left the scene being pulled away in ambulances. The humiliating incident made waves in the social circles of South City. Everybody and their mother were wildly guessing about what could cause all of the rich heirs to be sent to the hospital after a vicious ass-kicking. When Timothy slunk back to the tropical villa, Richard was waiting for him with a suspicious look on his face. Back so soon. The others were too high profile, Grandpa, so I thought it was better if I returned. Home first. I still have to meet Abigail for the engagement ceremony tomorrow. Thus, it would be bad if someone got an angle on me now. Timothy rubbed his nose uneasily. Hearing that, Richard's frown eased into a satisfied smile. That's my boy, the future of the Caesar family. Fooling around is okay, so long you can grasp the timing. I'm going to go rest now, Grandpa. I promise I'll be in my best condition for tomorrow. Timothy hurriedly spun an excuse. He was still scared out of his mind, feeling every fiber of his body being strung tightly. There was no way he could admit to his grandfather that he was in huge trouble. Hence, Timothy already decided that the best course of action was to keep concealing the truth from his grandfather as long as he could. The alternative was too terrifying to think about. Panicking, he quickly made his escape. As soon as Timothy left, the butler spoke up, Mr. Caesar, don't you think there's something wrong with Timothy? He usually never looks that pale unless there's some trouble. Richard shook his head vehemently. No, there can't be. Who could give our family trouble in South City? Ah, that's true. Who can dare to offend the mighty Caesar family anyway? They. Butler laughed. The Protector Chapter 558 Richard stroked his beard thoughtfully before breaking into a smile. You know. Seeing Timothy growing into a sensible young man does make me feel rather. Proud. By the way, tell the Black family to prepare for our visit properly. I'll. Personally bring Timothy to ask for Abigail's hand tomorrow. Will do, Mr. Caesar. Back in his room, an anxious Timothy paced about uncontrollably. Now that the higher UPS of Quebec recognize me already, there's no way the Caesar family can still expand into Quebec. If we still try, I just know we're going to die painfully. Cold sweat beaded on Timothy's forehead again. He stroked his chin, unconsciously mirroring his grandfather's pose as he racked his brain. I need to find a way to make Grandpa give up the fight to control Quebec. Back inside the abyss, Levi was talking to Tim and the others. After exchanging the customary pleasantries, Levi went straight to the point. I had indirectly caused most of the problems that the Triple Group and Scott Yates stirred up so I'm planning on cleaning up this mess once and for all. Ah? It'll be more than enough if you help us tidy up the loose ends, Mr. Garrison. How can we ask for more than that? Tim and the others were genuinely fearful. Don't be too kind. I caused the problem in the first place, so it's only natural if I solve it. Levi said determinately. He continued speaking, besides, I'm planning on a large-scale development in Quebec with Morris Group as a starting point. You've seen our achievements in Northampton. I'm confident my company can do the same good for the people of Quebec as well. I understand now, Mr. Garrison. Please, if you have anything at all that you need, we'll provide it to you immediately, Tim said emotionally. When he and the other leaders heard about Levi's plans of developing Quebec, they were all excited beyond belief. At the same time, their respect for him increased enormously as well. Levi was a hero who swore to fight on the battlefield, 
killing their enemies and protecting Arudaya. And yet, this war-weary man could still think about the people of Arudaya, doing his best to develop and modernize his country. This god of war was truly one in a million. That night, Levi graciously refused any special treatment and went to the south. War zone to room with the soldiers there instead. Early in the next morning, he received a call from Abigail. Levi, I'm getting match made today. Can you please come over later? I don't. Really feel secure if you aren't here, Abigail pleaded sincerely. Relax, Abigail. With me around, no one is going to force you to do anything you don't want to, Levi said calmly. You're literally the best brother-in-law I could have asked for. I bet you're reluctant to see me get married off too, hey? Abigail teased, sounding far happier now. Of course. You're Zoe's little sister. There's no way I'm going to let anyone bully. You, Levi said seriously. Oh, so it's all because of Zoe. Abigail sounded slightly disappointed, but she was still cheerful for the most part. That's okay, Levi. I'm happy so long you're willing to take care of me. By eleven o'clock, the Caesar family were finished with all their preparations in Tropical Villa. Two luxury sedans were lined up by the gate. The security car that followed behind the sedan was filled with numerous chests of valuable treasures like gold, silver, and even a vaunted legendary pearl. As the Caesar family, we can't hold back when we go to ask for someone's hand, Richard said as he stroked his beard. He turned around to face Timothy, a sudden look of astoundment crossing his face. Timothy, what happened to you? Didn't you sleep well last night? The dark circles under your eyes are darker than the abyss. You look like a car ran you. Over, boy. Timothy smiled awkwardly. Yes, I couldn't get used to the bed, so I didn't sleep. Well. That was a lie. In reality, Timothy had been too terrified of his grandfather to rest. Much less sleep. For the entire month, he lay awake the entire night in fear. Oh, that's all? Don't worry, my boy, after the Caesar family has a reliable base in South City, you'll have plenty of time to get used to your room here. Richard stroked his beard and smiled, a grand blueprint of the Caesar family's planned expansion flashing across his mind. In his view, the Caesar family was just a few days away from completely conquering South City. On the other hand, Timothy tried not to let his utter terror bleed into his expression. He wants me to stay in South City long term? Ever since that incident, Timothy was petrified of even going out of the house. Grandpa, can I discuss something with you? Timothy rubbed his head ruefully. What is it, my boy? Richard asked. Let's just pull out of South City, Grandpa. Forget the proposal. It's meaningless. Timothy blurted, unable to contain his words any longer. They fell out in a tangled rush. Listening to Timothy's desperate exclamation, Richard's eyes narrowed into slits. The Protector Chapter 559 What's the matter? Explain it to me right now. Richard demanded with fury. Grandpa, I think that Quebec is pretty much a red ocean, and the developments there are not worthy of the Caesar family's resources. Moreover, there's nothing impressive about Abigail's background, so I don't think she's a good match for me. Timothy explained. What the hell do you know? Richard bellowed. After the fall of Scott Yates and the triple group, the turf there is now wide open. The Caesar family could only take up about half of the resources, and yet you're telling me that it's not worth your time and effort? In order to keep our foothold in the South City, we need to cultivate a puppet. Who better than the Blacks? It has to be Abigail. Grandpa, 
are you aware that the South City is basically in chaos at the moment? We're only going to burn more than half the resources that we invest into it if we set foot in South City right now. Timothy was terrified at the notion, because he did not wish to stay a second longer in South City. Bullsh asterisk T. Why don't you have any confidence in yourself? What are we afraid of? In the South City? Who could have threatened us? Richard was incensed at this. Point. Grandpa, I. That's enough. Richard's roar made Timothy shudder. After a moment, they arrived at the Black family manor. Robert, Meredith, and all the blacks were out at the entrance to greet them. Greetings, Chief. It's been a long time. Meredith and her husband were excited at the sight of the Caesars. Bailey and Pamela were all smiles at the sight of Timothy too. They were very satisfied with their future son-in-law. Abigail, however, snorted at the sight of Timothy, he's so lacking compared to Levi. Look at those dark eye circles. I bet he must have been doing illegal businesses at night. Initially, Timothy was indifferent toward this marriage proposal today. However, his eyes glinted at the sight of Abigail. She's so pretty. There are a lot of pretty girls at Southampton, but wow. I don't think anyone could compare to her. Besides, I heard that she still goes to college. At the sight of her, Timothy changed his mind right then and there. I'm going to win over Abigail first. Whether I'm staying in South City or not, that's a problem for another day. The Black family was quite content with the marriage arrangement this time. Especially after seeing their future son-in-law in person. Abigail, you're so lucky. He looks like a decent man. The Blacks could not help but praise Timothy. After that, Richard and Meredith exchanged pleasantries at the entrance of the Black family manor. Even though we're very close, we still have to observe the necessary formalities. Here are my wedding gifts, Richard ordered his bodyguards to present his wedding gifts to the blacks. The Caesar family's bodyguards carried boxes of wedding gifts into the black family manor. Abigail wanted to interject but was stopped by Pamela. Meredith and Robert were both grinning from ear to ear. The Caesar family is only taking the formalities seriously because they have immense respect for us, blacks, and Abigail. Welcome. Richard and his people were welcomed warmly into the Black family manor, where the two families engaged in jovial exchanges. All of a sudden, Richard signaled for everyone to keep quiet. Now, I would like to listen to how the two betrothed really think. Timothy, House. Your impression toward Abigail. Richard cast a glance toward Timothy. Timothy grinned, Grandpa, very good. I'm willing to marry Abigail. Wow. The blacks were excited to hear him. That's great. Abigail is going to marry into the Caesar family. The black family is going up the social status totem pole. Richard glanced at Abigail next, what do you think, Abigail? All eyes were on Abigail, anticipating her answer. Well, sucks for you, cause I'm not. She made herself loud and clear. Murmurs and whispers filled the air, astonished at her blatant rejection. The Protector Chapter 560 All of them cast looks of disbelief at Abigail. They thought the marriage proposal was going to be moot since it was near. Impossible for Abigail to reject a man as perfect as Timothy. In spite of it all, things did not take an expectant turn. Nobody would have imagined that Abigail would slap the Caesars with an outright refusal. The more shocking point was that the quasi royal clan of Southampton, the Caesar family, was brutally rejected. It was even humiliating when the head of household, Richard, was the one who led the marriage proposal on behalf of Timothy. This piece of news would bring great dishonor to the Caesar family. The dynamic of the relationship between the blacks and the Caesars changed. Drastically the moment Abigail rejected the marriage proposal. She was not merely saying no to her marriage with Timothy. 
Instead, she was essentially putting the relationships between the Blacks and the Caesars at stake. The Black family would pay a great price for her audacity. Richard and Timothy widened their eyes in disbelief at Abigail as her rejection was beyond their expectations. What did you just say? Richard demanded. I said, I don't want to marry him. Abigail repeated with a resolute tone. What? How dare you, Abigail? What the hell are you saying? Meredith and Robert were taken aback by their daughter's rebellion and bellowed at her. They hurriedly added, Abigail. What are you doing? You should just agree to it. Leonard and Jonathan chimed in, exactly. Abigail, how could you have possibly rejected this offer? We can't afford it. Abigail, you have to agree to this. Don't be rash. The blacks all pressured her into agreeing to the marriage. Because they knew they would be done for if they had indeed caused embarrassment to the Caesars. Hence, Abigail must agree to it at all cost. Tears rolled down her cheeks as she looked at the others. Don't I get to choose who I'm marrying? It's already the 21st century, so why are you people still practicing the archaic arranged marriage culture? Are you all fossils, for crying out loud? Richard's face sank at her remarks. Is she calling me a fossil? It was apparent to everyone that Richard was displeased. We're really finished this time. In the meantime, Meredith was incensed at Abigail's remarks as well. She reprimanded her granddaughter openly, Abigail, I could have accommodated to your usual whims, but I will not tolerate it today. You know what? You're right. You don't get a say in your own marriage. Robert sighed and chimed in, Abigail, you have to agree to this today. You have to put yourself in our shoes. Bailey and Pamela hurriedly added, Mr. Caesar, we agree to his marriage. Proposal on behalf of our daughter. We're sure she will agree to it eventually. However, Richard waved his hand to dismiss them, no, I want to hear her. Saying it. Timothy was enraged as well, that's right, we have to hear it from her. No woman has ever rejected me. After the both of them said that, all eyes were on Abigail again. What are you waiting for? Say yes. All of them egged her on. In her entire life, Abigail had never been so torn in making a decision before. Just then, a silhouette flashed across Russell's mind. Wait a minute, Grandma and Grandpa. Why do we have to force Abigail when she's reluctant to marry? We are quite an established family as well. There's no need to stoop so low as to beg at others. Russell spoke up all of a sudden. He knew about Levi. Hence, it was only natural for him to stand by Abigail and be the only one in the black family to support Abigail's decision. Moreover, he knew that everyone would come buttering up to the black family if they had Levi. There wouldn't be a chance for the Caesar family to even make a sound. Ah! It seems like the blacks don't think much of my family. Tisk tisk, Richard. Mocked after that. Feeling displeased, Timothy chimed in as well, it seems like the blacks are not satisfied with you, Grandpa. Chief, that's not what we meant. Nobody dares to disrespect you and the Caesar family. Meredith and Robert hurriedly explained. The Protector Chapter 561 Slap him. Bob, the butler, was infuriated. Russell, slap yourself. Meredith said in a stern tone as a response to Bob's suggestion. She was infuriated at Russell's brash comment. All this while, Russell was one of the younger members of the blacks whom she had no need of worrying. However, she did not expect Russell to go against them at this critical point. I'm so disappointed in you, Russell. Slap yourself. Robert also felt disheartened at Russell's rebellious attitude. Yet, Russell shook his head stubbornly, 
I don't think I've done anything wrong. Grandpa and Grandma. I will not apologize. You're wrong for refuting Mr. Caesar. Meredith roared at him. Who proposes in such a tyrannical manner? What does he take Abigail for? A. Toy. Russell asked. Clearly, he was not giving in either. Abigail agreed, yes. That's right. Why do we have to cater to the Caesar families? Every whim. Richard laughed as he listened to their exchanges. You may be right, but the Caesar family is indeed stronger than the blacks. If I say you're wrong, then you're definitely wrong. Richard said condescendingly. Meredith relented, yes, it's survival of the fittest. We are indeed weaker than the Caesars. So, we could only listen. She was an iron lady herself, so she knew better than any of them. Thus, she could only give in when life demanded her so. So we are wrong simply because we're weaker. Russell asked. That's right. You are wrong, so slap yourself, and I will drop the matter. Richard. Shouted. Then he looked at Russell like Russell was no more than an ant in front of him. But Russell stood his ground and shook his head, No, I will not surrender. I've done nothing wrong. Yes, Russell did nothing wrong. Why does he have to slap himself? Abigail supported him. They insisted because they knew Levi was going to back them up. Nonetheless, she would not agree to this arranged marriage even if there was no Levi. Meredith, Robert, you really amuse me with how you discipline your younger generation, Richard sneered at them. When Richard said that, Meredith and Robert could not help but feel offended. Then, she took a step forward and slapped Russell across his face. For a brief heartbeat, drop-dead silence ensued. Russell looked at Meredith with disbelief. Ever since young, Meredith had never slapped him before. But now she's slapping me because of the Caesar family? How absurd! The Blacks sighed. Who would want to stoop so low if it weren't for our deteriorating family status? Russell, you have to understand my position, Meredith whispered to Russell. Then, she turned over and ordered Abigail, Say yes, Abigail. You have to agree. To it today no matter what. Robert said angrily, yes. You don't have the right to reject. Richard would really be enraged if we keep this up, and we would suffer because of it. Richard and Timothy regarded the blacks with great interest, anticipating their next move. They enjoyed toying with people with their power and influence. Abigail, what say you? Timothy sneered as he looked at her. I will not marry you. A sound could be heard right then and there, and along came Levi. Russell and Abigail's eyes glinted with delight at Levi's appearance. Levi, you're here. Abigail rushed to his side at once. All of them were stunned at the sight. Levi is here? Timothy's face contorted after he saw Levi coming in. Even though Timothy had no idea who Levi was, he presumed that Levi wasn't. Just a nobody. After all, he had unrestricted access to that place. Levi glanced at Richard, I heard that you want to beat up someone. The Protector Chapter 562 Meanwhile, Richard did not take heed of Levi and glanced in the direction of Robert and Meredith instead, who is this? Is he one of the younger members of your family too? Meredith and Robert sighed and lowered their heads. They were indirectly saying yes to Richard's query. Ha! Huh. Do all the younger members of the blacks disrespect their elders? Richard deliberately mocked in a louder voice. As a matter of fact, he was almost roaring. Meredith and Robert were terrified at the sight. Richard is really mad right now. They were well aware of the chief's temper. He never lets people off the hook easily when he's enraged. The black family would soon face an unparalleled crisis. They glared at Levi angrily. Russell has already pissed off Richard enough. 
why does Levi have to appear? And anger him too? Haven't we done that enough? Levi laughed and glanced at Russell, did he ask you to slap yourself? Go, slap. Him back. I. Russell hesitated. My family would never agree to me slapping Richard Caesar. On the other hand, this is an order from the god of war himself. Russell was on the fence about his next course of action. At the same time, the others widened their eyes in disbelief at Levi's brazen. Suggestion. What? Did he just ask Russell to slap Richard Caesar? Is he crazy? Even Richard was stumped at Levi's audacity. Nobody had dared to disrespect him. Not in Southampton, let alone in Quebec. Not to mention a youngster like Levi. Russell, what are you waiting for? Slap him. This is an order. Levi's tone was. Determined. Russell straightened his back unconsciously at Levi's orders. I'm doing it. If anything should happen, I have the god of war backing me up anyway. Moreover, Russell thought it was impossible for them to be bullied by an outsider. In his own manner. With that thought in mind, Russell dashed toward Richard, his right hand was. Already in midair, ready to slap Richard across the face. Richard froze on the ground, baffled at Russell's brazen move. This bastard dares to hit me? Russell, what are you doing? Meredith and Robert panicked at the sight. They tried to stop Russell from advancing. Get away. All of you. Richard bellowed all of a sudden. Hey. The blacks were taken aback. Go away. I want to see who dares to lay a finger on me today, Richard shouted. He did not believe that Russell would really slap him. Yet, the blacks did not move a muscle. What if Russell really slaps Richard across the face if we do not stop him? The black family will be wiped off the surface of the earth. I'll say it one last time. Go away. Richard roared. He ordered his bodyguards as well, do not stop him. I want to see if this bastard really dares to hit me. The blacks were terrified to see Richard all red from fury and finally decided to stay out of Russell's way. As for the bodyguards of the Caesar family, they had to stand aside too. They were certain that Russell would not really hit Richard. Unless, he's crazy or an idiot. At that moment, Richard beckoned at Russell. The Caesars looked at Russell with wry smiles on their faces, positive that he wouldn't strike. I will make sure that the black family suffers if you don't hit me today. Richard said in an attempt to challenge him. I. Russell was torn, yet again. Slap him. Levi's voice could be heard loud and clear. Hearing that, Russell seemed enlightened by Levi's orders. He stepped forward and slapped Richard across the face, hard. Whack. The crisp sound shook everyone to their core. Pin drop silence ensued, once again. Everyone held their breaths at the unexpected turn of events. Richard was stunned. Not knowing how to respond, he froze on the ground. The Protector Chapter 563 Richard let out a cry in pain after some time. Everyone gasped in shock, their eyes widened in bewilderment. A youngster from the Black family had slapped the Quasi Royal Household head. From Southampton. How dare he? Talking back to someone his station was already disrespectful enough, but a slap. Across the face was a whole new level of disgrace. At the same time, Meredith and Robert were about to faint at the sight. Is Russell freaking crazy? He really hit Richard. Russell had always been the most capable and obedient child among the youngsters of the Black family. However, he defied everyone's expectations of him today. It was as if he had gone cuckoo. Why did he do everything that Levi asked him to do? The Caesars were equally surprised at Russell's bold strike. What a lunatic! They were under the impression that Robert wouldn't even dream of berating. Richard, even if he were given the permission to do so. Let alone slapping Richard across the face. But Russell had done the unthinkable. 
Richard cupped his slightly swollen cheeks and gave Russell an incredulous look. The pain emanating from his cheeks made him grimace. Looks like we have a ballsy one here, eh? Richard was oddly calm. But everyone knew he was livid with fury. Richard Caesar was someone who would not let anyone who enraged him off the hook. In fact, he would fight till the point of life and death. Otherwise, there wouldn't be an end to it. But how could a powerless family like the Blacks fight against the Caesar family? It would be like an egg dashing itself against a rock. Hence, Russell knew things had gone to the point of no return. It was either the Blacks or the Caesars who would survive. He felt extremely apprehensive as well. When he was trying to come up with an answer, Levi did him a favor by replying. Yes, he is. So what? You. Richard was about to speak when Levi interjected him. You asked for Russell to be slapped, and he slapped you back. It was fair and square, Levi grinned. Timothy, who was used to act with impunity, held himself back from striking Levi. Because he did not know Levi's true identity. Otherwise, he would have slapped Levi across the face right then and there. He was afraid of Richard knowing the incident from the night before as well. Thinking that Levi was ridiculous, Richard burst into a derisive laugh, fair end. Square, you say. He looked over at Meredith and Robert, you guys have done such a good job in educating your younger generation. Ha ha ha. It was clear as day that Richard was mocking them. Then he added, we are all players of the survival of the fittest game. Weaker. Players like you are doomed to be trampled all over. Robert Black, I came all the way from Southampton to Quebec for this marriage proposal, observing every formality required to honor your family, and this is how you repay me. Richard then proclaimed, from now on, I am cutting off all ties between the Blacks and the Caesars. I will stop at nothing till only one of us remains. Standing. The Blacks were in an uproar at the proclamation. All of them shuddered at hearing it. Are the Caesars and the Blacks fighting to the death? Doomsday for the Black family is approaching. The Blacks paled at the proclamation. We are all going to die just because of these two idiots. Turning over to Levi, Richard sneered and said, Young man, did you know you are the culprit for the wipeout of the Black family? The Caesars burst into a laugh. The Blacks are so naive to think that they could fight against us. The Protector Chapter 564 This moment was akin to doomsday for the Black family. They would not be able to fend against the Caesars. Levi grinned, you had the audacity to say that you are going to wipe out the Black family. Russell was visibly relaxed to hear Levi. The Blacks cast puzzled looks at Russell. Has he gone nuts for real? How could he still smile in face of the possible crisis of a wipeout? Meredith and Robert were about to stop Levi from degrading Richard further. However, Richard waved his hands to dismiss them, everybody stop talking. Young man, do you think I am not capable of wiping out the Blacks? Richard bellowed at Levi. Levi smirked enigmatically, from now on. I will be right here waiting. You could. Ask however many people you want to come here. I will succumb to defeat if I. Could not handle anything that you throw at me. Richard was not enraged by Levi's frivolous remarks. On the contrary, he burst. Into a chuckle. I am so impressed that the blacks managed to cultivate such overconfident. Youngsters. And then, Richard's eyes burned with rage. Excellent. We will accept the challenge. I will give you one week to contact every possible connection that you could find. You guys better be well prepared, and don't ever accuse me of bullying the blacks. Levi and Richard had agreed to a fight. All this had transpired without the head of the black family uttering a single word. Let's go. Richard left with his bodyguards and took the wedding gifts with him. In the car. 
Richard was fuming with rage. This was the first time a youngster had provoked him. Grandpa, is it really okay for us to burn the bridges with the Black family this way? Timothy couldn't help but ask his grandfather. He was still apprehensive about Levi's true identity. What is there to worry about? It's impossible for us to cultivate a puppet from the Blacks right now. We are only left with the option of marching right into the South City to grab our portion of the market. Seven days later, I will let everyone in the South City know the Caesar family's wrath. All of them have to give way to us. Caesar's then. Richard snorted. Meanwhile, drop-dead silence stretched between the blacks. Meredith and Robert had slumped to the floor, spent from the confrontation just. Now. Despair was written all over other family members' faces. We are essentially committing suicide for offending people like the Caesar family. On the other hand, Levi looked calm and composed. He ruffled through Abigail's hair, don't worry, I'm here. Nobody could force you into doing anything you refuse to do. Russell was overjoyed, grateful for Levi's presence. Otherwise, the blacks would be trampled all over by the Caesar family. He was not at all worried about the upcoming fight between Levi and Richard. The Caesar family has a death wish. However, the blacks could not understand this. After regaining their composure, Bailey and Pamela approached Levi and reprimanded him, Garrison, who do you think you are? Who are you to intervene? In our family matters? You don't have the right to interfere with my daughter's marriage. Yes, that's right. Who do you think you are? Did you do it on purpose? That is the Caesar family from Southampton. They're from the Quasi Royal clan. How dare you offend them? Leonard and the others were infuriated at Levi's recklessness too. All of them cast death glares at him, wanting to skin him alive for them putting them in such a dire situation. Meredith and Robert, however, did not confront Levi first. Instead, they turned to Russell. Russell, would you mind explaining why you did such a thing today? That's right. You're usually the calm and composed one. Why are you behaving like a lunatic today? Don't you know how strong the Caesar family is? They were immensely disappointed in Russell. Their disappointment was a mirror of their high hopes in Russell since they had plans to cultivate him to become the next head of the Black household. Having said that, it seemed near impossible that they would keep up with the plan. The Protector Chapter 565 You have to give us a viable explanation. Russell spoke up with his head held high, my reasons are simple. First of all, I will not stand idly by as the Caesars bully us. Second of all, their intention to marry Abigail was clear as day. They're obviously planning to exploit our network. Here to get their foothold in the South City. I could never let these things happen. Nonsense. You are so blind to your own errors. Just then, Robert could not hold it in any longer and slapped Russell across his face. Despite being slapped across the face, Russell still stood his ground. I've done nothing wrong. Russell insisted, I will never admit that I'm wrong. Even if you guys beat me to death. Meredith sighed aloud and her knees almost buckled from her fury. All the others hurriedly steadied her when they noticed it. Robert then explained his stand, Do you think we are really oblivious to the intentions of the Caesar family? Do you think we have no idea that they're oppressing us? But what choice did we have? We are specks of dust compared to the Caesar family. Frankly speaking, the Caesar family only needs to move a single finger to annihilate us all. Meredith said furiously, exactly, Russell. When have you ever seen me stooping? So low? Do you think I'm really happy to marry off Abigail just like that? That we are so happy to cater to the Caesar's every whim? We just don't have any other 
option. The Caesar family's far-reaching influence is beyond our imagination. If we were stronger than the Caesars, why would I have to bear with them? I would have chased them out our door. You're dooming us, Russell. Richard Caesar will pulverize us all, and we will suffer a fate worse than death. This is all thanks to you and Levi. Meredith looked at Russell in utter disbelief, why did you do what Levi told you to do? I, Russell was at a loss. He did not know how to explain it all. Levi chimed in at this moment. I don't think he went overboard when he returned Richard Caesar's slap. Everyone turned their attention toward Levi. Levi Garrison, did you know you've made a grave mistake? Meredith could not help but question him. Who gave you the right to invite the Caesar family to a fight? You're just an outsider. What does anything from the Black family have to do with you? Quintus. And Keen roared at him. Do you even understand the consequences of your actions toward the Black family? We're going to be ruined for sure, and it's even possible for us to lose our lives. Bailey felt the urge to slap Levi. Anything to do with Zoe is my business, so don't worry. I will handle this on my own. Levi was confident. Crossed by his delusional remarks, Meredith spat at him, I'm going to get someone to talk some sense into you. Meredith then called Caitlin and Aaron. She recounted everything that happened to the two. It was not even two hours before Aaron and Caitlin rushed to the Black family. Manor together with Zoe. Is it true? Aaron and Caitlin were about to faint when they knew about the incident. Especially, Caitlin she was very agitated, Garrison, did you know you've stirred up huge trouble? Why did you have to cause us trouble as soon as you reached South City? Do you wish to see us all die? She broke into an uncontrollable sob. Aaron's face sank. Even Zoe had a despondent look on her face as she glanced at Levi. She thought he was finally going to make himself useful after coming to the South City. However, she did not expect him to bring such a disaster to the Blacks. You'd better come up with a good explanation for this. Zoe gave Levi a death glare. The Protector Chapter 566 Nevertheless, Levi was all relaxed in his manner, don't worry, I will take care of this. And how exactly do you plan to do so? Aaron challenged him right away. Caitlin was still sobbing, didn't you see that the blacks are all reduced to tears? Already? How are you going to deal with this? With that smart mouth of yours? Why did you have to do this? Why can't you just stay at Northampton? And? What are we going to do with this trouble that you've caused? Zoe cried out of despair. Not long after, Jenny and Logan reached the Black family manor as well. What happened? What's wrong with you, Levi? Do you know you've offended? The Caesar family? They're the Quasi Royals of the Northampton. Logan could not help but bellow at Levi. Jenny looked at Zoe and her parents in contempt, I've long said that nothing good could come out of you guys coming here. Logan, do you have any idea how to deal with this? Keen and the others rushed to Logan's side, hoping that he would have a solution to their woes. However, Logan's face sank, I've just heard the news that the Caesar family is going to go all out on this. What could we do anyway? The Zax family still has some influence in the South City, but we will not be of much help here either. Why did you guys have to offend the Quasi Royal Clan of Southampton? The Blacks were devastated to hear Logan's reply, to say the least. They had always depended on Logan. If even Logan couldn't do anything about their predicament, then they were truly doomed. Russell, what's the matter with you today? You always seem like you know what you're doing, but why did you do something so stupid today? Don't you know who Richard Caesar is? 
Why did you slap him? Hey! Logan chided Russell as. Well. It was futile to play the blame game since the incident had been blown out of. Proportion. The piece of sensational news had traveled far and wide. Hence, it was impossible for Richard to keep quiet on this matter that concerned. His dignity. There was no doubt that he was going to take action against the Black family. I don't think I've done anything wrong. The Caesar family is obviously being the bully here, so I can't just turn a blind eye to that. Then, he glanced at Levi, moreover, we have Levi here. We will surely get this settled. Levi admired Russell's firm stance. This is what the Black family lacks. Right, keep bluffing. Yes, you have a bright future ahead. But this is the Caesar family from Southampton that we're talking about here. I don't think even Scott Yates and his triple group could have dealt with this mess. The two of you really went cuckoo to have attempted a fight with the Caesar family. How are you going to fight against them? Logan was exasperated at their nonchalant attitude. Russell was getting irritated at their ignorance as well. Why don't you guys believe in me? Don't worry. This matter will be resolved. Logan glared at him, you want us to believe in you. Then, Logan approached Meredith and Robert, Grandma, Grandpa. I swear to handle this crisis with all my resources. Leave this to me. All right, we have to depend on you to deal with this mess. There's nothing much we could do. Meredith replied. But please don't get your hopes too high on this since the Caesar family is quite powerful. I will try my best to minimize the losses, though. Even though the blacks would be spared in the end, you guys still would have to make some sacrifices. Logan meant that the black family could only keep their essential members. People like Russell and Levi might have to be sacrificed. Great. We don't expect to come out of this unscathed. We just hope that we could minimize the damages. Logan sighed, Grandma and Grandpa, you guys could only depend on me. During this critical time, Meredith nodded her head, Yes, Logan. The rest are useless trash. The Protector Chapter 567 Logan was exasperated as he cast a glance at his grandparents, I've told you. Both that they had gone out of touch with the Black family matters. They would only cause trouble if permitted to come back. And voila, look at what happens as soon as they're back. Meredith glared at Caitlin and her family, you're right, Logan. We regret not listening to you. We shouldn't have asked them to come back. At the same time, Caitlin was almost drowning in her own tears. She was finally accepted by the Black family after such a long time. And now, Levi had ruined it all. Garrison, what did we owe you? Why did you have to avenge us so? Aaron couldn't help but shed a tear. Mom and Dad, don't be too sad. Maybe I could try asking Iris to seek help from the Morris Group. Right, Levi also works for the Morris Group. He wouldn't stand idly by. Zoe added. Aaron's eyes glinted with delight, correct. Morris Group's boss is very capable. I'm sure he would be able to help. With that, Aaron then approached Meredith and Robert, Mom and Dad, don't be mad. Zoe knows someone really capable. He would be able to settle this. Logan questioned him right then and there, could you guarantee that you would solve this? I, Aaron hesitated. Ha! Huh. What kind of capable people would you guys know? What a joke! Nobody could compete with the Caesar family in the whole of Quebec. Aaron retorted. What? Is the Caesar family really that powerful? Aaron gulped. Meredith then dismissed Aaron and his family, get out. You guys are an embarrassment. She did not wish to see them for a second longer. Then, 
she added after recalling something, right, not one of you should leave. The Black family manor this week. Keen, keep a close watch on them. Understood. Keen and the others exclaimed. Hey. Zoe and her family paled. Grandma is grounding us. We could only leave after settling this. They were going to be the scapegoats. What do we do? Zoe was worried about her work. Zoe, I'm sorry to say this, but you have to work from home in the meantime. In the end, Zoe and her family were grounded at the Black family manor. Levi, look at what you've done. How would you explain yourself this time? Aaron and Caitlin glared at Levi. Mom and Dad, why don't you guys think of this as your holiday? We would head back to the Northampton with our heads held high. Levi sounded casual. It was as if he was really here for a vacation. Levi Garrison, how do you still have the heart to joke around at this hour? Zoe shouted at him. Zoe was fierce toward Levi when her mother and father were around. But as soon as her parents left, Zoe said to her husband, Darling, I understand. That you did it all for Abigail. Good, at least you get me. Levi smiled. He was not afraid of not being able to solve the problem. Actually, Levi was more apprehensive about having nobody to understand him. But this has been blown so out of proportion that you couldn't solve it. Zoe furrowed her brows. Don't worry. Just leave this to me. Levi grinned. How are you going to deal with this when we can't even get out of here? Zoe was stumped. Levi, however, was all smiles, don't worry. I could get out of the black family. Whenever I want. I'd like to see who would dare to stop me. The Protector Chapter 568 The blacks had imprisoned Levi and his family in another heavily guarded villa. Levi walked over to the entrance of the villa, and the security guards swamped him. You can't leave. You've got to stay right here. The head of the security guards bellowed at Levi. What if I insist? Levi grinned cheekily. You could try. All of them glared at Levi. They would stop at nothing to prevent him from leaving this villa. Who gave you the right to restrict other people's freedom? Levi challenged them. We are at the Black Family Manor, and we play by their rules. You cannot go anywhere. Do you understand? One of the security guards warned him. Upon hearing that, Levi's lips curved into a smile. There is nowhere that I, Levi, Garrison, cannot go. Get out of my way. But the security guards did not move away and inched closer to him instead. Then, Levi made his move and turned into a shadow, slithering his way out of the group of security. With a few plops, all of them slumped to the floor. They were all exorbitantly priced security guards employed by the Black family. However, Levi was the god of war the undefeatable legend on the battlefields. These security guards were mere mole crickets and ants to him. When Zoe sensed that something was wrong and dashed outside, she was greeted by the sight of the security guards tumbling on the ground while wailing in pain. As for Levi, he was already nowhere to be seen. Did he do all these? Zoe widened her eyes in disbelief, stumped by the sight before her. The blacks knew the news of Levi's escape not long after. Meredith and Robert rushed to the scene. You guys did a good job in educating your children. Meredith and Robert mocked as they glared at Aaron and Caitlin. Mom and Dad, we have no idea that Levi escaped. Caitlin and Aaron were indignant at the accusation. Meredith scorned, what do we do now? I don't suppose he's going to be back to deal with his own mess. Bailey and Leonard added, he must have escaped and left this huge mess for us to follow up. So despicable of him to leave right after he's stirred up such a huge trouble. He wouldn't run away. Zoe, Abigail and Russell exclaimed at the same time. Abigail and Russell knew about Levi's true identity. As for Zoe, 
she had faith in Levi's personality. She believed that he wouldn't leave her alone to face all this trouble. I will never understand why you guys defend him so. Meredith and the Blacks looked at the three of them incredulously. I, Abigail and Russell exchanged glances with each other. However, they bit their tongue and did not say anything further. It was a top military secret that they would be divulging after all. Just then, Zoe held her head high and declared, because he's my husband. At the same time, Levi left the villa and came to the abyss. Azure Dragon, White Tiger, Kieran, and Phoenix had all arrived at the South City. God of War, upon investigation, we have found out that the families that are recently snatching turfs are all backed up by certain forces. To conclude our findings, external forces are coveting to make South City theirs. The Caesar family is here for the very same purpose as well. They want to make the blacks their puppets to put a foothold in South City. Phoenix had obtained first-hand information. Levi smoked on his cigarette and smiled thinly, they're going to make the commoners suffer because of their battle for territories. I will not let innocent people sacrifice for their selfish gains. The Protector Chapter 569 Understood. The four of them nodded. Give me a list of all the forces that are stirring up trouble in South City recently. I want to get rid of them once and for all. Levi ordered. Yes, sir. I will get to the bottom of this, Phoenix replied. After Phoenix has identified them all, Kieran, please organize a banquet and invite them all under the name of Neil Atkinson. Let them decide the venue. Levi said. To Kieran. Kieran nodded in acknowledgement. Meanwhile, two breaking news spread like wildfire in the South City. The first one was, the Black family and the Caesar family will engage in a life and death fight one week later. The second one, Neil Atkinson from the Morris Group had arrived at the South City and had invited all the influential forces in the city to a banquet. The piece of news on the fight between the Caesar family and the Black family did not have any suspense to it. There was no doubt that the Black family would be wiped out of the South City a week later. However, nobody had expected the second in command of the Morris Group would come to the South City. Nobody knew what was going on. The influential forces, who were invited to the banquet, were puzzled as well. They did not know what was up Morris Group's sleeves and started to engage in discussions with each other. After a while, they came to a conclusion that the Morris Group was here at South City for a foothold as well. Impossible. We will not tolerate such a thing. We have not touched the Northampton as well. How could they mark their territory here? This time, the forces were oddly allied on this front. It was mainly because Yates's departure had cleared off quite some space for the emergence of a new dominating force. The local forces did not wish for others to make a mark on their very own piece of land. The outsiders would have to step over their dead bodies. The Morris group is really naive to let us decide the venue. Do they have a death wish? What kind of idiot he is to leave this to us? What if we set the venue at Jagged Club? All of the leaders burst into a laugh. They found it amusing because Jagged Club was actually the largest underground boxing arena in South City. It was full of the finest underground boxers in the East. They planned to make it a trap for the Morris Group. All of them agreed on triumphing over the Morris Group at the Jagged Club three days later, and that included beating Neil Atkinson to death. Brothers, let us show our trump card and let them witness the locals' power. Sure, we can't let them leave South City well and alive. How dare they think of taking over the South City? They were anticipating the sight of Morris Group swarmed by thousands three days later. On the other hand, the Black family was still shrouded in gloom. They were so disheartened that they skipped dinner altogether. The Blacks pinned all their hopes on Logan. Even then, they knew their chances. 
were slim. Since Logan's grandfather had retired, his words did not carry much weight as they used to. Even though the Zacks family indeed had a great network, they would probably not risk offending the Caesar family just because of the blacks. All of a sudden, Meredith turned to glance at Zoe and Abigail, didn't the two of you say that he would come back? Where is he? Um, Abigail was at a loss for words. Grandma, don't worry. Levi will be back after resolving the trouble he caused. Zoe replied in a determined tone. She had just gotten news from Iris saying that Neil from the Morris group was coming to the South City, and she planned to contact him for help. Hence, she seemed confident in her reply just now. Zoe, why won't you believe that he's escaped? Let me be frank with you, I've asked for people to track him down, and there's no sign of him in South City. The Protector Chapter 570 The Black family had already done a round of search, but there was no trace of Levi at all. He must have already left South City. Stop waiting for him foolishly, Keane said. Coldly. Aaron and Caitlin agreed as they said, Sweetie, why are you still holding on to hope? He must have run away. Yet, why else would he disappear suddenly? In her defense, Zoe replied, Dad, Mom, you know how Levi is as a person. This time, the situation is not the same. We are talking about the Caesar family. If I were him, I would also run. That's right. If you don't believe us, just wait and see if he shows up. Caitlin added angrily. The couple was already determined that Levi had run away. However, Zoe was conflicted. Indeed, the opponent this time was too strong. No one could be certain of the situation. After all, the Caesar family was a quasi-royal clan, and they were at a different level from them. However, she believed that Levi would never leave just because of the power of the Caesar family. Darling, where are you? Come back quickly to clear up everyone's misunderstanding. Zoe desperately wanted Levi to appear now. If only he could descend like a god and settle the matter directly. Yet. On the following day, Levi had not appeared. On the third day, he did not appear as well. There was no news of him for the past few days. Whenever Zoe called him, his phone would be switched off. Now, even Zoe was panicking. Did he really run away? But in her heart, she still firmly believed that Levi did not run away. She believed in his character more than anything else. Look, here you are, still foolishly waiting. How about Levi? He hasn't appeared. Yet. Now that he turned his phone off, what else is it if he did not run away? Everyone in the Black family ridiculed her aggressively. Bailey sneered, I just asked someone to search in Northampton, but they couldn't locate him at all. I guess he really ran away. At this time, Russell said, everyone should return to doing what they usually do. Levi will definitely show up and resolve this matter. Everyone got stumped by his words. Meredith stared at Russell incredulously and asked, are you implying that we are worrying for nothing? Russell shook his head and said, Grandma, I'm just saying that Levi will come back. Rather than these useless chatter, it's better to go on with our lives. Slap. Meredith slapped Russell's face all of a sudden. The slap sounded crisp and loud, shocking everyone. The last time Meredith gave a slap was due to the Caesar family and not her own intention. But that day, she intentionally slapped the junior she valued the most. Grandma, you, Russell covered his face and looked at Meredith, baffled. How could you say that? If it weren't for you and Levi, would the black family end up this way? You caused big trouble and are still speaking such nonsense. Are you able to solve this matter? Meredith trembled violently with anger. Russell stared at her seriously and said, Yes, 
I can. How are you going to solve it? Meredith asked. As long as Levi is here, the matter will definitely be resolved, Russell stated. Stubbornly. He's not even here now, and you still expect him to solve the problem? How? Ridiculous. Are you still in your right mind? Meredith scolded. You guys don't have a clue. Actually, Levi is, forced into a corner, Russell. Wanted to reveal Levi's identity. What? Everyone looked at Russell curiously. Even so he was getting suspicious. Did Levi have an identity unknown to them that Russell knew and supported him? So surely? The Protector Chapter 571 I... Russell then remembered the confidentiality agreement and stopped abruptly. What? Say it. Meredith urged. In short, I believe in Levi. Since he dared to declare a battle, he must have had. Confidence. Russell stated with tightly clenched fists. His face was contorted, and his veins bulged as he decided to endure the. Grievance. I have to endure. I must. A few days later, everyone will find out what is going on. Ha, how naive. Meredith scoffed. Russell, we are so disappointed in you. As everyone looked at him with a downcast expression, he couldn't help but feel upset about it. Sooner or later, you will know the truth. Russell bit his lip fiercely. Soon, it was three days later. In the jagged club. More than two dozen forces were gathered. The strongest of them were the Cayman family, the Herman family, and the Oliver family. These three, plus the Lopez family, were the giants in South City. The Lopez family was not involved in the battle because they were still recovering from their previous loss. Therefore, these three families became fearless in South City. They robbed wherever and whatever they went. After all, the ones who held them down before had fallen. In addition to the three families, there were seven or eight big clans. Of course, there were also several big names from the underworld. Apart from Scott Yates and Sebastian Lopez, the Grand Master was in control of the underworld of South City. Once a follower of Scott, he later formed his own clan and grew his clan in secret. Over the years, Many experts came under his following, and he was invincible in South City. After Scott and Sebastian fell, he stepped forward and took over everything. Of course, there was another formidable character, who was the owner of the Jagged Club the Stone Buddha, Brock Green. He owned the largest underground boxing arena in South City and had more boxing experts than those ranked in the East. Everyone was afraid of him. That night, Jagged Club was fully prepared. In the huge banquet hall, there sat more than twenty big bosses from South City. Just then, Brock announced, I have arranged one hundred boxing experts in my underground boxing ring. We're just waiting for them to come. Haha, <laughs> that's really great. Morris Group will not be able to set a foot out once they step in. Exclamations came from the crowd. Everyone was ecstatic upon hearing that. They knew that Brock had the strongest underground boxers in the city. Stone Buddha, can you tell us what experts are there? Someone asked. They include the Beast of Death, the Wolf King, and Hades, who were undefeated in the Eastern Death Matches for a consecutive of 99, a 100, and 188 matches, respectively, Brock answered, and everyone trembled in fear. What? These three are here. The crowd exclaimed. The Beast of Death was from W City and was undefeated in 99. Consecutive death matches. Meanwhile, the Wolf King was from the Grasslands, and he was undefeated in a hundred consecutive death matches. Lastly, the identity of Hades was unknown, and his record was the most terrifying. He broke the record of the Eastern Death Match a total of a hundred and eighty-eight consecutive death matches undefeated.
There were rumors in South City that these powerful men under Brock could easily crush and kill the four mighty generals under Scott. Everyone was aware that Brock was, in fact, the most mysterious figure in South City. Hence, when Scott's faction fell, Brock immediately invited dozens of Eastern fighters to South City. His motive was clear to take over South City. Hades is here too. Hein Cayman, the head of the Cayman family, gulped nervously and asked. Hades was also known as the Thousand Slayer because he once slaughtered thousands of pirates alone, shocking the East. The Protector Chapter 572 Everyone was surprised and ecstatic. They had originally heard that Brock had dozens of underground boxing experts who could top the ranks in the East. Little did they know that these three legends were here. With that, everyone broke out in cold sweat. If there was anyone who wanted to have a go at Brock, they didn't dare to now. Without mentioning anything else, Brock could sweep everything in South City. With only these three people. They looked at Brock in astonishment and drew in their breaths. He must have spent much money even to invite Hades. Brock nodded his head and said, Yes, he's here too. The crowd let out a collective gasp. Then things are set in stone today. The crowd chattered excitedly. They all had the same target today they must chase out Morris Group. In addition, they made a mental note that Brock Green was not to be provoked. Who would have thought that he would invite these three masters? We are also prepared. We have gathered thousands of combat experts. No. Matter the motive of Morris Group, leaving is not one of their options. They. Grandmaster said gleefully. Brock took a sip of his tea and said, Well, it's up to us on how to deal with our problems within South City. It's not appropriate for an outsider to intervene. That's right. The crowd voiced their agreement one by one. The Grand Master smiled and asked, Stone Buddha, I'm very curious. What is Hades's background? Yes, we're all very curious. Perhaps you could enlighten us. Questions came from the crowd, and everyone looked expectantly at Brock. They had heard the legend of Hades many times. He was the strongest fighter in the East in the past two years, and anyone who challenged him ended up dead. Yet, they had no clue about his background at all. Brock smiled and said, Do you know how much I spent by inviting him? Everyone shook their heads. One billion for a year. Brock answered. Everyone took a deep breath. Big bosses like them would usually hire some combat experts to be there bodyguards, so they had a good idea of the market price. Generally, those costing over five million a year were the pros in their league. They did not expect that Hades cost him a billion for a year. It was crazy. He's definitely worth the price. Brock said firmly. Hades was actually a guard. As Brock said that, everyone was shocked. However, he was not simply just a guard. He was once the most powerful god of war in El Nation and was invincible on the battlefield. He was known as Hades, the god of military. Brock finished. Oh? He's the god of war of a country? Aside from the fact that El Nation is a small country, his identity is then equivalent to that of Arudaya's god of war, the Grand Master exclaimed. Brock nodded, yes that's right. Otherwise, how could he be so scary? Stone Buddha, there's something I can't figure out. Why would a god of war come to participate in the battle? Hein came and voiced his doubts. Everyone also turned their gaze to Brock with curiosity. The reason is simple. Arudaya's god of war destroyed El Nation, and he had kept a low profile since. In order to survive, it's normal for him to do so. Brock replied. The crowd exchanged gazes and inhaled sharply. Still, Arudaya's god of war is more terrifying. There are so many things you all don't know. Back then, Arudaya's god of war 
only sent his subordinate the White Tiger, along with the cavalry regiment and in total 19 of them to destroy a country. Brock recounted emotionally, as though he had been part of it. Haha, <laughs> with Hades, Morris Group can give up on leaving this place. The crowd became excited as they looked forward to it. Who could defeat Hades? The Protector Chapter 573 Brock glanced at the vacant chair and said coldly, Someone move this chair. Away. If Neil is eating with us, he has to stand. This is South City. This is the rule. Yes. Everyone clapped their hands in agreement with Brock's decision. The chair was moved away soon after. Shortly after, Levi and his party arrived at the Jagged Club. White Tiger smiled and said, I hope there are skilled experts today. They will certainly not disappoint you, Levi said with a smile as he lit a cigarette. Several waitresses came out to the entrance of the Jagged Club and led his party into the banquet hall. As they entered the banquet hall, everyone in the room looked shocked upon seeing Levi and the young faces in his party. Everyone was surprised. They wondered if everyone from the Morris group were as young as them. You're here with only four people. Someone sneered from the crowd. Why not? Unless this is a trap. Levi answered with a smile. It is a trap. Anyone with a working brain knows that. Is that Neil Atkinson? Hein. Asked with a sneer. Kieran replied with a grin, it's me. But the one in charge today is my boss, not me. He finished and looked at Levi. Everyone was shocked again. They had expected the second in command, Neil, to come that day, but they never expected that the mysterious boss of Morris Group would come in person. Everyone in South City knew that the boss of Morris Group was mysterious and powerful, and even Scott Yates and Triple Group had suffered losses in his hands. Due to the mysterious force he had behind Northampton, Northampton was now a forbidden place, and no one dared to covet the area. Almost everyone in Quebec was speculating the identity of the boss behind Morris Group. No one had ever expected him to come that day. They scrutinized Levi with doubtful gazes as they had never seen him before. Before this, some people suspected that he might be a member of the South. Hampton Prince Gang. However, they dispelled this doubt after seeing him in person. He was not one of them. Levi scanned the room and immediately understood that these guys did not leave. A seat for him. What's wrong? Are there any doubts? The Grand Master held a folding fan in his hands and asked leisurely with a smile. Levi asked in a cold tone, Where is my seat? Everyone laughed at his words. Seat? Do you have a right to sit? Hein came and argued. The Grand Master laughed and added, No, you should say, Would you like to risk your life sitting? Brock stated, In South City, you only deserve to stand. Levi took a puff of his cigarette, then he smiled and said, But I insist on sitting. Today. How arrogant. This is South City and not Northampton. Your words don't count, so just bear with it. Next to Levi, Draco Herman a member of the Herman family, said angrily. Hearing that, Levi's gaze slowly fell on Draco Herman. Draco raised his head and looked at him proudly. What are you going to do? Straighten up. Wham. Draco was sent flying with a kick by Azure Dragon in a flash. Everyone was stunned. Kieran then moved Draco's chair behind Levi, and Levi took a seat. Everyone present was shocked and looked at Levi in shock. They did not expect that Levi would make a move so easily in such an aggressive and domineering manner. Everyone was flabbergasted with their mouths gaping wide open. Draco got up from the floor and roared, How dare you touch me? You're seeking death. What's with the noise? I'm trying to have a meal here. Levi frowned. The Protector Chapter 574 Kieran stepped forward, 
pulled Draco in front of him, and slapped him. You, Draco was just about to speak, when Kieran gave him a slap again. Slap. 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 Draco's mouth and cheeks were swollen after several consecutive slaps, and he could not speak another word. Of course, he dared not speak any more even if he was given a chance. He would only be asking for trouble. Boss, it's quiet now. He can't talk any more. Kieran came forward to Levi and said. Levi nodded in response, picked up his fork, and tasted the food. Everyone present was dumbfounded. He had slapped Draco in front of all the big bosses from South City. In short, it was equivalent to slapping all of them. He did not have any respect for them at all. Morris Group really was as domineering as the rumors had said. You guys are courting death. Someone in the crowd couldn't bear it any longer. And got up to say. Quiet. What's all of this noise over a meal? Brock immediately stopped the commotion, and everyone calmed down. However, he glared at Levi angrily. This man was eating the dishes nonchalantly. And enjoyably, as though he really came for a banquet. The Grand Master also said, let's eat peacefully. With that, everyone picked up their forks. However, no one was in the mood for food except for Levi. He looked as though he really came for the food, and everyone stared at him. Getting angrier as he ate. All this while, no one had ever dared to disregard them. Only after an hour did Levi finish eating. After he wiped the corners of his mouth. He looked at everyone and smiled, why didn't you all eat? This is the last meal. Who would dare to eat? Someone sneered from the crowd. He was implying the fate of Levi. Brock smiled and said, your invitation can't be as simple as inviting us to a meal. Right. Levi explained directly, okay, then I will explain why I came to South City. My purpose is straightforward. I want to quell the unrest. You are all on my list, so. Listen. If it's not your territory, don't snatch it. If it's not your money, don't take it. Everyone inhaled sharply. How domineering. He came to quell the unrest in South City. No one had this right in the whole of Quebec. Besides, he asked us to listen. Ha. Huh. He's delusional. You guys are too much. Bang. Hein couldn't help but slam the table. Meanwhile, the others glared at Levi with anger. How dare he come to our turf and be this domineering? He's asking for death. Brock slammed the table too and raised his head to look at Levi. How dare you? Speak in that kind of tone. And you want all of us to listen to you. Levi nodded and said, yes. You have no choice. Upon hearing that, Brock laughed, and everyone joined in the laughter. Is he out of his mind? Saying something like that in front of all the big bosses from South City. The Grand Master released his folding fan in a swift move and said with a smile. What is your trump card? How are you so sure that we will listen to you? Levi smiled, and behind him, his three men also smiled. Immediately, everyone understood. The three men behind him were his trump card. How ridiculously arrogant of him to dare to come and make demands with only three men. Just when everyone was in a state of shock, White Tiger said, I'm sorry, but three's a crowd. I can take on everyone alone. In addition to being shocked, everyone was stunned. Three's a crowd? I can take on everyone alone? This is madness. This guy is as delusional as his boss. Levi added, that's right. My friend here is enough to deal with you mere people. The Protector Chapter 575 Even Brock Green, who had the nickname of Stone Buddha, felt that they were going overboard with their bullying. I am aware of all your actions these days. Many innocent people have been implicated, and many people have died because of all of you. Do you all enjoy 
lives built on their misery. Levi turned to question them. However, he did not get any reaction from them at all. Perhaps, it was more fitting to say that they were all numbed to the deaths of innocent people. Therefore, his words could not trigger them at all. Moreover, during that period of time, they were snatching territories in South City. And as a result, there were many casualties. Many people lost their jobs and homes. However, these big bosses were indifferent to their predicament. Does it have anything to do with you? Besides, so what if people died? So what? If people are injured? What af asterisking busybody? If you dare stop what we are doing, then be prepared to face our wraths. Everyone was totally unmoved and scoffed at Levi. They were dumbfounded that he was even bringing such a matter up to them. This is the reason I came today. You lot are not going to cause turmoil in South City anymore. Period. Levi said harshly. In that case, you have to show us your true capability. Brock exclaimed and smashed his cup on the ground. Bang! Bang! In an instant, all six doors of the banquet hall opened simultaneously, and a large group of people poured in from the outside. All of them were armed with weapons and were all skilled experts. At least 300 men filled the originally spacious banquet room to the maximum capacity. Not only that but the corridors outside were also crowded with people. Thousands of fighters had surrounded this place. All of them were awaiting just one order, and they would chop Levi into pieces. The big bosses from South City smiled and straightened their backs with newfound arrogance. They have revealed their trump card now and believed that Levi could no longer remain arrogant. Now, what else do you want to say? Hein asked triumphantly. Levi smiled brightly and replied, I'll still say the same thing listen. Ha ha ha, are you blind? Can't you see the masses? Are you still in a daydream? Someone from the crowd scoffed. The Grand Master showed little but contempt as he said, Young man, it's fine to be a little arrogant. Now we will give you a chance. As long as you kneel and kowtow three times, we will consider letting you go. In the eyes of the Grand Master, Levi had no chance of escape. Even if Levi's men were very skilled and defeated the thousands of combat experts present, there were still more than a hundred skilled fighters in Brock's underground boxing arena. Not to mention the three legends, one of whom was the L Nation's Hades. They stood absolutely no chance against them. Levi didn't speak. Instead, White Tiger smiled he was excited. Well. Are there any more? White Tiger licked the corner of his mouth eagerly. Hey. Everyone was taken aback at his bold statement. Was he complaining that there were too few opponents? Even in this dire situation, he is that arrogant? Is he daft? Or crazy? Since you want us to listen to you, then we should play by the rules. Brock said. Go on, please enlighten me. Levi said in response. Brock explained, we will only listen to you once you defeated us. Otherwise, you shall listen to us and turn Morris Group over to us. Brock Green was a wily old fox. He would never give up the chance to turn the situation into something favorable to him. Immediately, Levi nodded and agreed, OK. We will send out only one person from our side. Levi pointed at White Tiger. Then he dropped the shocking remark, as for yours, it doesn't really matter how many you send over. Having heard that, the big bosses glared at Levi and his party angrily. The Protector Chapter 576 Excuse me. This is South City, for Pete's sake our territory. How dare he humiliate us in our city? Okay. I hope you get to keep your arrogance later. Brock said coldly. He added, let's change a venue. Soon after that, they moved to the underground boxing arena, where it could hold. 
the thousands of people, and all of them surrounded the arena. The big bosses had all flashed their trump cards. The Grand Master looked at Levi with a sneer and said, You said it yourself that. You are sending out only one person, so don't blame us for the one-man fight. With that, the Grand Master gave an order, and immediately hundreds of experts rushed towards White Tiger. The long swords in their hands dazzled chillingly, overflowing with murderous intent. Looking at his attackers, White Tiger's smile gradually became cheekier. Boom! He punched the first striker head-on and sent him flying several tens of meters away. Then he landed on the ground and remained still instantly. Boom! Boom! Bang! Crash! Hundreds of people attacked simultaneously, and it was an awestruck scene. Even if White Tiger could fight all of them, the onlookers were sure that the never-ending attacks would tire him out. Looking on as hundreds of people drown out White Tiger, smiles burst out from the corners of everyone's lips. White Tiger is sure to lose. But after only a few seconds, everyone's faces changed. More and more of their men were sent out flying by White Tiger. A minute later, everyone's faces became solemn. Three minutes later, everyone's faces were full of disbelief. Five minutes later, everyone's eyeballs were about to fall out of their sockets from the sight. They were all shocked to the core from seeing hundreds of people falling to the ground and screaming in pain. Meanwhile, on the boxing arena, only White Tiger remained standing. He was too good of a fighter. He only used five minutes to defeat four to five hundred people with his bare hands. Everyone exchanged glances as they gradually realized why Levi only sent out White Tiger. He was strong enough to defeat them all. Is that all? Send everyone out. I will beat all of them. White Tiger couldn't get enough of it. Atrocious. Brock said angrily. There was no room for outsiders to act brazenly on his turf. Very quickly, he gave an order, and hundreds of boxing experts under him appeared one by one. Of course, the three strongest players have not yet appeared. He didn't think it was necessary for them to appear. Attack. Attack him one by one. I don't believe he will keep it up. Brock roared. Hundreds of top-ranked boxing experts rushed up to challenge White Tiger one by one. Boom. One. Two. Three. Eighty-eight. Ninety-nine. White Tiger became more spirited as he fought, and he did not look tired at all. Much less exhausted. The boxing experts from South City were knocked down by him one after. Another. In the end, Brock's face darkened. The talents of his underground boxing arena were all completely defeated. White Tiger was too good of a fighter. He was not even defeated after being challenged by hundreds of combat. Experts. This is thrilling, but there is no real master at all. Don't you have anyone? Stronger. White Tiger shouted. The big bosses looked at each other. How arrogant. How could they tolerate such arrogance in South City, much less on Brock's territory? Stone Buddha, you must show your last card. This B** start is too strong. Everyone pleaded with him one after another. Brock squinted his eyes with a glint and said coldly, Let the Beast of Death and Wolf King out. Soon, the Beast of Death and the Wolf King appeared. Immediately, the two emitted extremely dangerous auras, which filled the place. The atmosphere became so tense that everyone felt a numbing sensation on their scalps, and their blood seemed to have coagulated. The Protector Chapter 577 Originating from W City was the Beast of Death. He was only about five foot six. But his skin was a golden bronze, like cast metal, giving people a sense of Strength. He studied and practiced ancient Thai boxing for 30 years and took down each of his opponents in 99 deathmatches within 30 seconds previously. 
As for the Wolf King, dense hair covered his face, and his eyes glowed. Resembling a real wolf. When he was a child, the Wolf King grew up with a pack of wolves. His fighting skills blended with that of the wolves and were so strong that they were unimaginable to a normal person. As soon as the two appeared, they threatened the onlookers with their imposing auras, making it difficult for them to breathe. The most powerful fighters always brought the threat of death at first sight. Whatever you do, just don't kill him. Brock gave the order. The Wolf King stood aside and didn't move. Meanwhile, the Beast of Death nodded and stepped forward. He wanted a one-on-one -on -one with White Tiger. However, White Tiger beckoned with his finger and said, Come at me together. And save me some time. The Beast of Death and the Wolf King exchanged glances, and their eyes were filled with disbelief. They seemed to be surprised by White Tiger's stupidly cocky behavior. Since he said so, then you should both go. Brock shouted. His eyes were filled with murderous intent. The Beast of Death and the Wolf King exchanged looks again, and the Beast of Death made his move first. With every step he took, the floor formed cracks. Boom. Crack. After he took three steps forward, the underground boxing arena blew apart. That scene was simply shocking. Everyone knew that the underground boxing arena was made of special materials. Yet, he crushed it with only a few steps. Just how much power did he possess to be able to do that? Soon after, the Beast of Death was in front of White Tiger, and he charged towards with his knee up. That move was definitely comparable to being rammed by a car, and the impact was absolutely not less than that of a sports car speeding at a few hundred yards and crashing into a train. Almost at the same instant, the Wolf King also made his move. Whoosh! He possessed the agility and speed of a wild wolf. When he leaped forward, he swept towards White Tiger with a swift attack at a distance of tens of meters. It didn't matter if it were the Beast of Death or the Wolf King, any one of them would definitely split White Tiger into pieces with their killer moves. Over the years, they had long become killing machines. They would dedicate their time every day in their lives to find out ways to kill. More effectively. What they had been doing was just terrifying. White Tiger smiled as he felt Wolf King and the Beast of Death close at hand. Boom. He struck his left fist towards the knee of the Beast of Death and his right first. Towards the claws of Wolf King. He is courting death. Isn't this a futile endeavor? The onlookers exclaimed. All of them thought that White Tiger was overconfident. In himself. Boom. His left fist landed on the knees of the Beast of Death. Crack. The Beast of Death's knee, which was as hard as diamonds, cracked open it. Once, and he was sent flying out from the impact. Boom. White Tiger smashed and distorted the Wolf King's entire arm with a fist, and the Wolf King fell on his knees directly in front of him. At that instant, everyone was sent into a state of shock, and they looked on with their eyes wide open. The two legendary fighters, who were undefeated in 99 and 100 death matches respectively, were beaten even though they had teamed up. The Beast of Death and the Wolf King let out cries of agony, and their cries brought everyone back to reality. Both of them were defeated by White Tiger. At that moment, Brock could no longer sit still, so he stood up. He was more formidable than anyone expected. On the other hand, Levi had a smile on his face. With his buddies around, there was no need for him to make a move. Oh, how lonely it is for me to be invincible. However many of you are left, go up all at once. Stop wasting time. Levi called. Out. Hearing Levi's words, Brock was completely riled up with anger. He roared, call out Hades. Hein, the Grand Master, and the rest were beyond excited. Finally, the strongest fighter is coming. Suddenly, a black shadow was cast on the arena, and an oppressive aura. 
gradually filled the place. The Protector Chapter 578 Hades was here. He was not only the record holder of the death matches, but he was also El. Nation's God of War. The former details were not that important. However, the latter, his identity as a nation's god of war, certainly was. In ancient times, he would be an invincible god of war. In the past, everyone only regarded him as a fighting machine. However, after realizing his identity as El Nation's god of war, everyone's impression of him had changed. In the secular world, he was a godlike existence among ordinary people. The god of war wore a simple black sweater and a hat. What was terrifying was that he wore half of a wolf mask. As soon as he appeared, the focus of the whole audience was on him. Hades came to the middle of the arena step by step, and the temperature dropped sharply. An overwhelming murderous aura engulfed the place. As soon as those ordinary onlookers felt his suffocating aura, it became difficult for them to breathe. Their faces turned pale, and they looked as if they were at death's door. This was a true imposing aura. Since he was the god of war, Hades must have at least slaughtered a thousand people. His murderous aura was honed out on the battlefield and was not something an ordinary fighter could compare to. Brock and the others immediately got excited when they saw Hades appear. Even if the White Tiger could fight very well, they presumed that he was not Hades's opponent. Kill him, and I will reward you ten billion. Brock shouted. I'd add another billion. And I, three billion. Everyone started to add motivation, and the reward rose gradually. As long as Hades killed the White Tiger, he would be rewarded twenty billion. It was an amount that many people dreamt of, and Hades was no exception. His eyes lit up fiercely. For that amount of money, he would kill anyone in his way. Where is the person? Hades asked in a low voice. Everyone pointed to White Tiger. Then, he walked towards White Tiger step by step as he exuded a dangerous air. Around him. It was as if the actual Hades himself was reborn from hell. If he unleashed his wrath, there was no doubt that there would be at least a million corpses with blood flowing into a river. It was absolutely terrifying. Hades stood in front of White Tiger and looked up at him. When their eyes met, Hades's face changed drastically. It's him. This can't be. H he. His lips twitched, but he could not say a word for a long time as he watched. White Tiger. He could never forget this person. Hades could never forget the night, where a total of 19 people destroyed. Tens of thousands of his men in El Nation head on. It was him and the cavalry. Regiment. Subsequently, 19 of them killed their way into El Nation. They were. Invincible and wiped out the nation right then. In just one night, El Nation was utterly destroyed. As El Nation's god of war, he was also defeated, and he could only watch as they. Annihilated the country. By far. Arudaya's god of war was the most terrifying existence he had ever seen. His men were brave and good at fighting, and they were invincible in the world. This person in front of him, especially, brought him the trauma of a lifetime. It was the lingering nightmare that would haunt him all his life. Every night, he was haunted by the recurring dream of El Nation's destruction. And every time, White Tiger's ruthless face appeared in the dream. And every time, he was always jolted awake from the nightmare without fail. That person is simply too strong. He would never forget how he broke into the camp of 10,000 people and killed his way back and forth. Today, he actually saw it again here. He realized that Arudaya's god of war and his faction were too strong. Even if he had a hundred years to prepare, he wouldn't be able to take revenge. Now he could only continue to participate in fighting competitions to vent his emotions and grind away the trauma that Arudaya's god of war had brought unto him. Never in his wildest dreams did he think that he would meet White Tiger again. Suddenly, 
he recalled that Arudaya's five great wars regiment were almost inseparable from Arudaya's god of war. If White Tiger is here, that means that Arudaya's god of war should also be here. The Protector Chapter 579 Sweeping his eyes across the place, he saw Levi sitting at the back. Suddenly, Hades became dizzy and almost passed out. Meeting Levi's gaze, he felt as if he was suffocating. In an instant, his whole body was drenched in a cold sweat, and he couldn't stop. Trembling. His legs had a mind of their own as he knelt in front of White Tiger with a loud thud. The sound was loud enough for everyone to hear, giving everyone a huge shock. No one had expected it. Even Levi was shocked. He wondered what was the matter with Hades. He was supposed to fight White Tiger, but he knelt in front of him as soon as they met. Brock and the others also couldn't understand it. What's with Hades? Is this all a joke? Why is he kneeling in front of the enemy? Everyone rubbed their eyes, wondering if they were mistaken with what they saw. This was the strongest fighter in the Eastern Death Matches, who was undefeated. In 188 consecutive matches. He was invincible. Why did he kneel as soon as he sees White Tiger? They didn't understand, but White Tiger gradually gained realization. Even though Hades was wearing half a wolf mask, but White Tiger still recognized him from his eyes and his aura. You. Are you El Nation's god of war Hades? White Tiger asked tentatively. Hades nodded and shouted, the defeated warrior of El Nation pays his respects. To Arudaya's god of war and White Tiger. Everyone inhaled sharply upon hearing his address. Arudaya's god of war? White Tiger. What was that all about? Everyone couldn't react to the turn of events for a while. After hearing the address from Hades, Levi rubbed his temples helplessly. He had planned not to reveal his identity on this trip to South City, so he resorted to using force to solve the mess. But lo and behold, he did not expect to encounter the defeated warrior of El. Nation. Wouldn't my cover be blown? Levi smiled helplessly. Hades. What are you doing? Quickly kill him for me. Brock shouted anxiously. Yet, yeah, why are you kneeling to him? Everyone couldn't understand it and looked. On in disbelief. Hades did not speak. He looked at the crowd and slowly took off his mask. Now, everyone could clearly see what the other half of his face looks like. There were multiple crisscrossed scars, and his face looked extremely terrifying. Hades then said in a low voice, Do you know who left these scars on me? Brock and the rest looked at him with puzzled faces. It's White Tiger, who left them to me during the destruction of El Nation. He. Finished. What? In the destruction of El Nation. Could it be that Arudaya's god of war? Everyone's faces changed drastically. Then, they returned to their senses one by one. Hades had addressed Arudaya's god of war and White Tiger earlier. You guys are so bold to dare to make a move on just about anyone. Hades suddenly raised his tone as he continued, Listen. Standing in front of me. Is the White Tiger one of the five great wars regiments of Arudaya? Back then. He destroyed my El Nation single-handedly. Then, he turned to look at Levi, who was sitting not far away from him. And he is the world's most invincible, the nightmare of all countries, the greatest. Devil in the eyes of all guards Arudaya's god of war. Hades said with jealousy. As soon as his words settled, pin drop silence fell. The Protector Chapter 580 That moment was too shocking for Brock and the others. They couldn't believe that the person they were going to deal with turned out to be Arudaya's god of war. Now they understood why Scott's faction fell, why Triple Group withdrew from Arudaya, and why Morris Group was invincible. All of that was due to Arudaya's god of war. Otherwise, who else could move the two forces? Besides, South City authorities were more than eager to offer various preferential policies to Triple Group. Thus, 
it was impossible that the city's authorities would chase them out of the city. Judging by how Rudaya's god of war returned to Northampton just a few days ago, the timing was right. In an instant, they all understood. Thump! Thump! Everyone knelt down one after another. No wonder they dared to take on thousands of them with just one person. It was White Tiger, the king of war, who destroyed a country with only nineteen people in his troop. Sure enough, they had no choice but to obey. We were wrong. Please spare our lives. Brock cried out loud. Everyone kowtowed their foreheads on the ground. Levi stood up, walked to the front of Hades and said, You will follow me from now on. Understood, Hades answered with a nod of his head. Levi then looked at Brock and the rest. Why would I want your lives? Now, what you all should be doing is to listen to what I've been saying. You can't take things that are not your own. I don't care. Who has your back? If you are not satisfied, you can take me on. When Levi said that, everyone was almost frightened to death. Who would be so courageous to take on Arudaya's god of war? No one would dare to even if we have nine lives. God of war, we dare not. Brock and the others said in embarrassment. Also, do not spread the news. I would like to see who dares to covet South City. Levi said coldly. When Levi said that, Brock and the rest broke out in a cold sweat. Arudaya's god of war was going to take the opportunity to attack whoever was coming for her south city. At that instant, they immediately thought of a person Richard Caesar. A few days later, he would be attacking the Black family and even more forcefully into south city. In addition to that, make compensations to those whom you have hurt. Make sure everyone is taken care of, and I will send someone to keep tabs. Levi said. Understood, God of War. Everyone answered and nodded their heads fervently. God of War, I am willing to spend two billion for charity. Brock offered. Others also spoke, I would like to devote one billion to charity. Soon, tens of billions of charity funds were being offered. The leaders of South City were all stunned. As expected of Arudaya's God of War. He solved the turmoil in South City easily. With his intervention, he even raised tens of billions of charity funds in a flash. Sure enough, ruthless people need to be treated with ruthlessness, hey? Levi lamented. Everyone laughed. Another day passed. Levi never appeared and was still out of contact. To be honest, Zoe was a little anxious. She wasn't worried about Levi running away. In fact, she was mainly afraid that something bad had happened to him. Just then, Logan arrived at the Black family where they were still at a loss over the situation. Logan, how is it? Meredith asked agitatedly. Grandma, I have disappointed you. I tried my best. Logan said helplessly, his head drooping. What? The news was tantamount to a huge blow to the Black family. Logan was their only hope. What happened, Logan? Meredith asked nervously as her body trembled. The Protector Chapter 581 Logan sighed and said, Grandma, during this period of time, my father, grandfather, and I have used all the connections we can find and asked them to persuade the Caesar family to let the matter go. However, they are unyielding in their stand, and it didn't matter who went. They are determined to deal with the black family. Russell's slap had made Richard very angry, and he vowed to use all the resources of the Caesar family to deal with us. Logan explained. What? The black family will then cease to exist. Everyone in the black family panicked. Grandma, there is no other solution. The Caesar family has set their hearts to be ruthless this time. Their target is not only the Black family but the entire South City. Logan pointed out the facts. 
The Black family was just a sacrifice. I can't accept this. Meredith cried out, on the verge of tears. Grandma, there is only one way now, Logan said. What is it? Everyone in the Black family looked over to him. Surrender to the Caesar family and give up everything to them. Logan then glanced at them and whispered, in addition to that, hand over Russell, Levi, and Zoe to them. Only by compromising in this way will the Caesar family let us go. Otherwise, we will end up exterminated. Logan's proposal resonated among the members of the Black family. Bailey and the others agreed one after another, yes, that's right. Where there's life, there's hope. We can always rise again. Meredith and Robert exchanged glances, and they said helplessly, well, it can only be so. Grandpa, Grandma, don't be stressed out. First of all, Russell is just an adopted son. Secondly, Aunt Caitlin's family was already expelled from the Black family. So, these people are not essential. It's okay to give them up. Logan said. Everyone looked at each other. What he said was true. They were not the direct bloodline of the Black family. Hence, it would make more sense to give these people up to preserve the Black family's direct lineage. Okay, let's do it. Meredith gritted her teeth and decided. Although Zoe and her family were a distance away from them and could not hear what everyone was discussing, they were all smart enough to understand what was going on. Looks like Grandpa and Grandma are going to abandon us, Zoe said. Caitlin was already sobbing uncontrollably, and Aaron was visibly stressed. Zoe understood through this incident that the Black family still didn't accept them. At that moment, all she could feel were grievances and grief. Darling, where are you? Zoe missed Levi very much. Later on, a few days passed by quickly. Yet, Levi still did not appear. In a blink of an eye, the day where the Black family and the Caesar family were due for a battle had finally arrived. Haha, <laughs> are you still waiting foolishly? He already ran away. Logan sneered. Zoe stubbornly shook her head, no. My husband will show up. Caitlin and Aaron roared with anger, you still believe him at this time? It's over. For us. Why don't you ask him to show up now? I, Zoe muttered under her breath worriedly. Where's Levi? The biggest regret in my life is marrying my daughter to this scumbag. Aaron. Shouted and threw a fist at the wall violently. Caitlin added helplessly, me too. The worst thing that happened in my life was meeting Levi. In their opinion, this incident happened all because of Levi. On the other hand, both Abigail and Russell said in unison, don't worry. He will show up. Soon afterward, there was a noise outside the Black family's manor. The Caesar family was here. The Protector Chapter 582 it was a shocking scene outside the manor. The guards of the Black family were so scared that they almost knelt on the ground. Cars arrived one after another. Soon after that, more than 200 Black sedans surrounded the entire manor. Clack! 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 The doors of the cars opened one by one, and burly men dressed in white alighted from them. Everyone had the word Caesar embroidered in front of their chests on their white clothes. The men stood neatly in formation around the manor, completely locking down the area. The Caesar family was serious about this. They even dispatched their family's skilled experts. There must be at least seven to eight hundred skilled experts present. This was the consequence for whoever dared to provoke Richard or slap him. There were several cars surrounding a Lincoln limousine. The door of the Lincoln opened, and Richard Caesar alighted from the car. He glanced at the Black family's manor and sneered, I shall see how the Black family escapes from my clutches. Beside him, Thomas Caesar, 
the top expert in charge of the Caesar families. Security, sneered, and said, Master, today, our 800 men will flatten the Black family and take down South City. Hearing his words, the Caesar family's 800 white-robed men shouted. Together, today, 800 men of the Caesar family will flatten this place. The impact of the sound and the great momentum sounded like thunder in the sky, terrifying everyone in the manor. Gosh, how many of them are here? Meredith and Robert hugged each other as they and the rest of the black family trembled in fear. This is bad. We're all surrounded. Right at that moment, their guard ran in in a panic, staggering to the ground in fright. Yes, they are everywhere. They are dressed in white clothes with the word Caesar written on them. The guards outside said that there were at least eight hundred of them. They have surrounded us. Having heard that, the color drained out of Meredith's face. We're doomed. The Caesar family is too terrifying. They were serious about this. What should we do? Robert panicked. Is Logan not here yet? Meredith asked. At that moment, Logan became her only support. I can't reach him. I called Jenny too, but she didn't pick up either. Keen end. Quintus replied. Meredith just clenched her fists and said, I'm afraid that Logan's method will not work now. The Caesar family has prepared too large of a scale for the battle. It seems that Logan won't be coming. We can solve it ourselves. Although they were currently in a bad situation, Russell looked relaxed as he said that. Everyone couldn't refute Russell's words. They knew very well that Logan had run away since he surely wouldn't let the Zack's family be implicated. It's only right for Logan to protect himself and not come. After all, he contributed. Much to the black family. Meredith said, then she looked at Zoe and her. Parents with a sneer and added, what about her husband, Levi? He caused the trouble, yet he ran away and couldn't be contacted. When Abigail and Russell heard that, they really wanted to curse. However, Meredith was their grandmother, so they could do nothing about their frustration over her words. Meredith glanced at Robert and said softly, You may lose a lot today, so please be mentally prepared. I am. I just hope the young ones will be safe. Robert looked at Quintus and they rest with a conflicted expression. He was ready to sacrifice himself. Boom. Right at that moment, the door of the black family's manor was blasted open with a kick, and it fell to the ground with a loud thud. The Protector Chapter 583 The Caesar family launched their first attack by sending 800 men from their white army. They swarmed and completely overwhelmed the few dozen guards from the black family as they continued their onslaught. After that, they quickly arrived at the main hall and surrounded it completely. At that moment, the black family was scared out of their wits by the sudden incursion. This never happened before. Even Meredith and Robert gaped in shock as it was a sight that could only be seen in the military. Only then, Zoe and her family came to realize how powerful the Caesar family was when they saw the formidable regiment. No wonder they all say that they are unmatched in Quebec. They really are the most powerful family in Southampton. To think Levi got himself into so much trouble. Zoe gaped in shock while Caitlin was on the verge of tears. Levi, you good-for-nothing scoundrel. You got all of us in trouble, but you ran. Away first. I will skin you alive. Caitlin yelled. Aaron took a deep breath and deduced. He must have escaped because he saw how powerful the Caesar family is. Very quickly, the black family was forced to a corner as they awaited the Caesar family's punishment. Thump. Thump. The chaotic sound of footsteps boomed through the entire room, and everyone knew that signified the arrival of the head of the family. The white army automatically made way for a group of people, and the person 
Leading the posse was Richard. A few dozen men, including Timothy, followed behind him, and they were the Caesar family's experts in combat. The moment he stepped into the room, he started to look for Levi, and he breathed a sigh of relief when he realized Levi wasn't there. Our intelligence is reliable Levi really did run away. Now that he's gone, nothing can scare me anymore. As long as the powerful people in the South City don't interfere in this, we, the Caesars, can do as we please. After all, who can even match us in strength? Definitely not the puny black family. Richard walked to the middle of the room and scoffed, what happened? Didn't. You ask for reinforcements? Don't tell me that the black family didn't even try to find a single ally? How dare you disrespect the Caesar family like this? The Black family was petrified when they heard that. You must be mistaken. We have a lot of respect for your family. Meredith and Robert almost kneeled down. Humph. If that's so, why did one of your Yunjins slap me? Ignoring Meredith and Robert's pleas, he chuckled. Since you challenged us to battle, don't blame us if we go all out. Let me introduce my companions to you. These four are former navies, these three are commanders from the army, these seven are some of the best from King Cobra Assassin Organization. Besides that, these ten are bodyguards that we hired from all over the globe, and they all served under the rulers of their country before. Meanwhile, this is Black Panther. From Southampton's Underworld. We also alerted all our allies about this war. If, for some reason we cannot handle this ourselves, we can summon the powerful figures in Southampton with just one call. Don't blame us for going full force. After all, you started it first. The Black family gaped in shock when they heard Richard listing out all his connections. How do we even stand a chance against them? I bet even the most powerful families in the South City aren't their match as well. Even if the 800 members of the White Army weren't involved, the few dozen experts around Richard could plow through us with no trouble. The Protector Chapter 584 By the way, where's the person who slapped my father? Patrick Caesar. Richard's son, asked in a cold voice. When he and his siblings heard that their father was slapped in the face, they almost launched their attack that very day. After all, this was something completely unacceptable to the Caesar family. This is absolutely preposterous. How dare someone slap the Richard Caesar? Simply unbelievable. I did it. Russell stepped forward and stared at Patrick bravely. Ha! Huh. Very well then. An insolent fool like you dares to slap my father. Patrick bellowed. Indeed, I was the one who slapped him. He asked someone to slap me, so I slapped him back to return the favor. An eye for an eye. Russell stared at Patrick fearlessly. Russell's words enraged the entire Caesar family as the 800 white army soldiers glared at him menacingly. This was a matter of honor, so slapping Richard was akin to showing the Caesar family the utmost disrespect. They definitely wouldn't take that lying down. All they needed was a command for them to rip Russell into pieces. This time, Russell really messed up by stepping over the Caesar family's bottom line. Patrick laughed maniacally. I heard that the Black family's younger generation are all boastful little brats, and I got to see that for myself today. By the way, where's that girl? Abigail? Who does she think she is to reject my son? He bragged before that no lady in Quebec would ever reject his son's advances. So imagine the irony he felt when Abigail rejected Timothy. That was why the entire Caesar family was curious to see how Abigail was like. Upon hearing that, the Black family panicked. It's fine if Russell gets into trouble, but Abigail mustn't get involved in all this. After all, She's a direct descendant of the Black family. Despite their concerns, 
Abigail stepped towards Patrick fearlessly and smiled. I'm Abigail. I'm sorry, but I'm really not interested in your son. Patrick scrutinized her before saying, not bad. However, you're not worthy of my son. Brilliant ladies are hard to find, but pretty ladies are littered all over the city. My son can get a pretty lady any time he wants, so of course, there's no way. You're fit for him. That's right. Does she even look in the mirror? How dare she reject him? Apart from her pretty face, does she even have anything else? The Caesar family lambasted her at that instant. Abigail's expression turned into a contemptuous one as she snorted, You're right. I am not worthy of Timothy, so why are you are looking for me now? What I heard was true then youngsters from the Black family really are cocky. Patrick sneered. Oh, there's also that person, the one that challenged us, Caesars, to battle. Where is he? Patrick changed the subject. In an instant, the hall fell silent as everyone exchanged glances of apprehension. Because they didn't know how to answer his question. Patrick was stunned for a moment before he burst into a chuckle. Don't tell me. He's not even here. Everyone lowered their heads in shame when they heard that. However, at that moment, Zoe stepped forward. I am Levi Garrison's wife. I will take responsibility for my husband's actions, she declared. At that, Caitlin, Aaron, and the entire Black family froze in shock because they never expected Zoe to make such a declaration. Meanwhile, Abigail stared at Zoe in admiration. Originally, Abigail thought that Zoe didn't like Levi that much, but now she realized they both respected and adored each other. Ha ha ha, Patrick chortled. What a joke this is. A man actually ditched his wife and forced her to bear the brunt of his actions. Who said I ditched her? The Protector Chapter 585 at that moment, a resonant voice echoed across the hall. Levi. Darling. Is that Levi Garrison? Abigail, Zoe, and Russell immediately squealed in joy when they heard the familiar voice. At the same time, the Black family looked in the direction of the voice as well and saw an unmistakable figure. Levi had an imposing aura that commanded attention, and everyone's gazes were drawn to him as he strode towards the center of the hall. Timothy's heart sank to a bottomless pit when he made eye contact with Levi. And his right eye inexplicably started to twitch. He had a very bad feeling about it. Meanwhile, Richard's temper flared when he saw how Levi was as smug as usual. The person that slapped me was Russell, but Levi was the mastermind behind all this. Besides that, he was the one who challenged us to battle as well. Honey, what's wrong? Why the tears? Levi pulled Zoe into his arms and wiped her tears away with a piece of tissue. While everyone was watching. You're here at last. I waited for you for seven whole days. Where did you go? They all said that you ran away and left me behind, Zoe sobbed. Uncontrollably. I told you that I will handle this. So of course, I will come back here. I just went to take care of some other issue over the past few days. After Levi calmed the unrest in the South City, he donated tens of billions of charity funds to help everyone in need. Not only that, but he also established the Morris Group in the South City's market. Ahead of schedule. By doing that, he managed to expand the Morris Group's operations to serve the general public better. On the other hand, Abigail and Russell were getting emotional as well. Levi, we waited for you for so long. A lot of terrible things happened while you were gone. Don't worry. As long as I'm still here, I will make sure that no one dares to trespass into our territory. Levi announced coldly. At that, the Black family was utterly shocked. Are you kidding me, Levi? Why are you so freaking cocky? Meanwhile, while they spoke, 
they completely ignored the Caesar family. It was as if the Caesar family was invisible to them. When the Caesar family realized that, they were infuriated. Thud! Patrick kicked the door violently, and the loud bang shocked everyone. Zoe, who was in Levi's arms, was visibly startled as well. Meanwhile, Levi's expression contorted into a menacing one as he turned around. Slowly and glared at Patrick. How dare you startle my wife? You will face the consequences of that. While he said that, he had remembered every single mole and feature that Patrick had. Patrick's face was strongly imprinted in Levi's mind. I'll make sure he pays the price for his actions. Patrick sneered, really? That is such a joke. Didn't you say you'd admit defeat if you can withstand our attack regardless of how many reinforcements we call? 4. Levi nodded in acknowledgement. Yeah, I did say that. You can call all the reinforcements you want. I'll admit our loss if you defeat us. Haha. <laughs> At that, everyone in the Caesar family chortled. What a foolishly cocky man he is. Patrick smiled and asked, Are you gonna ask for reinforcements too? Are you thinking about going into battle without any reinforcements? Well, that's not really the case. After all, you're not powerful enough to warrant my involvement. Levi pronounced. But even if Levi really did want to get into battle, Kieran and Azure Dragon wouldn't let him. Patrick bellowed furiously. Where are your reinforcements then? Ask them to hurry up, or we'll launch our attack first. The Black family trembled in fear when they heard that. The Caesar family is getting serious this time. What should we do now? Damn it, Levi. Did you really think that you can oppose the Caesar family? Meanwhile, Levi took out his phone and called someone. You can all come. Now. The Protector Chapter 586 Haha. <laughs> the Caesar family burst into laughter when they saw Levi making a call because they thought that it was an act of pure stupidity. Just imagine the Black family's embarrassment right now. We know Levi way too well. So what if he calls every single powerful figure in Northampton? The Caesar family can crush them with just a flick of the finger. Besides, Levi isn't powerful enough to do any of that. On the other hand, Abigail breathed a sigh of relief because Levi finally retaliated. Meanwhile, Russell felt excited at the prospect of battle. Richard sat on the chair and mocked, I am curious to see what kind of reinforcements you called. Following that, Patrick commanded, tell our brothers outside to let everyone in. No matter who they are. In a matter of a few minutes, numerous luxury vehicles filled the streets. The few black families' guards who were apprehended were shocked when they saw that. Did they all come? They watched as swathes of men entered the manor. Have they arrived? The Caesar family was excited when they heard the commotion outside. Who's there? Announce who you are. Patrick demanded. The Black family was dumbfounded when they saw the guests because they were all powerful figures from the South City. I'm the head of the Goldson family, Hunter Goldson. However, Patrick wagged his finger and said, Nope, you don't make the cut. Next. I'm the head of the Johnson family, Tommy Johnson. Nope. After a few rounds, Patrick replied while smirking, None of you make the cut. Gosh, no one here interests me at all. The ten families that arrived were some of the most powerful families in the South City, yet they were still miles behind the Caesar family. I'm the head of the Cayman family, Hein Cayman. Everyone, including Richard and Patrick, was stunned when that name was uttered. The Caesar family was a quasi-royal clan, but one of the four most powerful families in the South City the Cayman family, showed up, and they had the power to threaten the Caesar family. I'm the head of the Herman family, Draco Herman. That name reverberated through the entire hall like a sonic boom. 
I'm the head of the Oliver family, Stanley Oliver. Like an atomic bomb, that name blew everyone's minds. Three out of the four noble families in South City had arrived. The Caesar family started to panic at the prospect of facing them and the other. Ten powerful families. Is that enough for you? Am I, Alexander Stark, invited to the party? A middle-aged man wielding a staff appeared at that moment. Are you the master of South City's underworld? Patrick's voice started to tremble. The Caesar family was now officially panicking because they knew how powerful they were. Can I join too? The stone Buddha Brock Green, reporting for duty, an orotund voice spoke. Brock Green had arrived with a hundred experts from the underground boxing scene, some of which were like caged beasts waiting to wreak havoc. Upon their arrival, the Caesar family's white army sensed danger in the air. Is, the stone Buddha here too? Richard and Patrick were absolutely dumbstruck. They knew that they couldn't possibly afford to cross Brock because he might be even more powerful than Scott Yates. That was why the Caesar family was determined to avoid Brock at all costs when they came to the South City to assert their dominance. He really is here. This spells nothing but disaster to us. Let me introduce three more friends to you. With a clap of the hands, three figures appeared behind Brock. This is the Beast of Death, who scored 99 victories the Eastern Death Matches. Gasp! Everyone drew in a sharp breath. The Protector Chapter 587 All of Richard's troops' expressions darkened instantly when they heard that, so it was obvious that they heard about the vicious reputation of the Beast of Death. Before. Next up, we have the Wolf King, who had 100 consecutive victories in the Eastern Death Matches. The Wolf King emitted a dangerous aura that made a chill run down everyone's spines. I know who he is. He came too. The bodyguards beside Richard were scared. Out of their wits. It wasn't an exaggeration to say that the Beast of Death and the Wolf King could deal with a few dozen of them at once. Finally, we have Hades, who broke the record of the Eastern Deathmatch spy. Having a total of 188 consecutive deathmatches undefeated. When Brock said that, the hall went deathly silent. The Caesar family had been searching for powerful fighters on the local and international scale over the past few years, so they were familiar with internationally famous combatants like Hades. They received some news a few days ago saying that Hades was hired by someone else with an astronomical price, but they never expected that Brock was the one who hired him. Hades emanated a cold and murderous aura honed through countless battles. When he stepped into the hall, in his presence, everyone felt their extremities tingling from the cold as a chill permeated their entire body. Just his presence was enough to intimidate everyone there. However, it was not unexpected as he was the strongest fighter from the Eastern Death Matches. It, really is him, Richard's men started to tremble in fear as they gave Hades a cautious look. They say that he kills without even blinking his eye. Even with the help from the 800 people from the White Army, he'll cut through all of us like butter. It was evident now that the Caesar family didn't have the home advantage in the South City. Hades gave Levi a courteous bow before scanning through the Caesar family. Menacingly. Those who want to challenge the Black family must get through me first. The Caesar family was shocked when they heard that, and they fell silent. Afterward. We really can't afford to cross him. The Caesar family was between a rock and a hard place now because they couldn't attack or retreat. Even though Richard seemed like he was sitting down calmly on the chair, his fingers were trembling anxiously. This was the biggest obstacle the Caesar family had ever faced. Meanwhile, the Black family stared at Levi in disbelief. How did he even do that? Even the Zacks family isn't able to ask all the powerful figures in the South City for help. But now, the Almighty Brock and Alexander are both here. And not to mention Hades. 
goodness, gracious! That guy intimidated the entire Caesar family with just his presence. Bailey, Pamela, Meredith, and Robert were all dumbfounded. Just who the heck is this Levi? How is he able to ask so many powerful figures for help? Meanwhile, Abigail and Russell felt an overwhelming sense of pride. On the other hand, Caitlin and Aaron could feel the nuances in the atmosphere. Because the Caesar family seemed more subdued now. What is Levi's identity actually? Zoe was, too, curious as she wondered how her husband managed to pull it off. Does he have a secret identity of some sorts? The Protector Chapter 588 The piece of news was just like a bolt from the blue to the Caesar family. Is someone else coming? Is this just the start of a nightmare? Timothy's pupils suddenly constricted as he realized something. He almost fainted at that realization. Coming to the South City was a very bad decision. That person is no ordinary man. The Black family was taken aback as well. Is someone else coming? A few more cars arrived shortly, and their license plates indicated that they were powerful figures from the South City. After that, a group of people dressed in suits rushed towards the main hall of the manor. Even the White Army standing guard outside the manor was frightened when they saw those people. The guards could tell that from their auras that their power was overwhelming. Tap tap tap. Both the Caesar family and the Black family was shocked when they heard the sound of footsteps. Someone else is here. When Meredith and Robert saw those people, they almost fainted. What? Oh my God! The rest of the Black family were astonished beyond belief as well. The most powerful figures in the South City are all here. Levi actually managed to accomplish something that Logan and his entire family couldn't. That's insane. Richard didn't recognize those people, but he could tell that they weren't the usual next-door neighbors. Meanwhile, Timothy was absolutely terrified when he saw Stephen, Tim, and the rest. It's them again? Weren't they at the abyss that night? Timothy's body trembled violently out of fear. We're screwed. Regardless of how powerful the Caesar family is, we still are no match for them. I am Tim Cronin from Quebec. I heard that someone was causing trouble to the Black family so I decided to see for myself what's happening. Richard and Patrick almost passed out when Tim revealed who he was. He's the governor of Quebec. If he's here, that means that the people behind him are. I am the South City's mayor, Stephen McKay. Who are you? Why are there so many people outside? I'm the deputy leader of Quebec, Woody Emile. I'm the head of the police department, right Hector. I'm the deputy leader of the South City, Corey Madison. They all introduced themselves one by one and made the Caesar family tremble. In fear. Richard panted heavily as if he was out of breath, and Patrick's face turned paper. White. Meanwhile, Timothy's legs gave way as he lost balance and stumbled. He really asked all of the most powerful figures in the South City for help. How is it possible for the Caesar family to even match that? It's impossible. The Caesar family was stuck in a very difficult position right now, and they didn't know what to do anymore. They couldn't afford to cross anyone present in the hall. Hades is powerful enough to take on our entire army, and Tim has more authority than all of us combined. We have no leverage at all. We are so screwed now. On the other hand, Abigail and Russell gave Levi a gaze of admiration. They knew that this was only a small taste of Levi's abilities because he was powerful enough to rule the entire world if he got serious. Similarly, Zoe was very proud too because her husband turned the tables and saved the black family. In the meantime, Aaron stood up straight and Caitlin wiped away her tears as their expressions seemed to say as expected of our son-in-law. However, Levi wasn't finished yet. He asked, are you already afraid now? Don't worry. We still have more to come. 
The Protector Chapter 589 The implications of his words were visible in the shocked expressions of the Caesar family. What? Someone else is coming? Is this not the end yet? Oh my god! How can we even handle this? Thump! Timothy seemed to have realized something at that moment. In just a split. Second, his vision blurred as he fainted and fell to the ground. However, the other members of the Caesar family were busy worrying about their own safety, so they didn't even pay any attention to him. Meanwhile, outside the Black family's manor, there were about 400 of the Caesar family's men standing on guard. Here to prevent anyone from the Black family from leaving. Thud. Thud. Suddenly, the rhythmic pulsing of a marching army was heard amongst the crowd. The earth trembled between their feet and made everyone dizzy as dust clouds formed in the air. Is there an earthquake? Everyone's first thought was that an earthquake was happening. No, it's not an earthquake. I can hear the sound of footsteps. It's coming closer by the minute. As the stomping grew louder, everyone started to panic. Look. Oh my god. Someone screamed and directed everyone's attention outside. They saw squads of fully armed soldiers running towards them from all directions. There were four columns for each squad from every direction north, south, east, and west. Aye aye. The White Army was scared senseless. They thought that they would reign victorious in their onslaught today, but that was before the arrival of that platoon. Everyone noticed that there was something unusual about the uniforms the platoon was wearing, there were some special symbols and certain words on them that were uncommon. At that moment, their flag bearer raised a flag that was adorned with a dragon. And everyone was struck with a realization. I. I see it now. This is the Dragon Legion from the Iron Brigade under the God. Of War's rule. That's right. I saw them on the news before. They managed to overcome an. Enemy a few times their size. Oh my God. Is that really the Iron Brigade? They watched as the Iron Brigade closed in on them while gaping in shock. It was as if a tsunami was threatening to swallow them whole. Thump! Thump! Everyone kneeled to the ground as they were drenched in cold sweat because of fear. Once the Dragon Legion got into their formation, Alfie appeared from behind the platoon. Charge! As soon as his command was given, the Dragon Legion marched onwards from all directions. The few hundred members of the White Army were caught off guard as they saw nimble figures climbing across the walls. Before they could react to the sudden attack, they were all subdued in an instant. It took less than twenty seconds to defeat the few hundred men, and when everyone realized that, they peed their pants out of fear. What the f asterisk ck is this? If we had known that the Black family would ask the Iron Brigade for help, we wouldn't have dared to come here. Meanwhile, the people in the main hall remained blissfully ignorant of the commotion outside because the onslaught happened too quickly. They couldn't even hear any signs of the few hundred men outside being subdued by the foreign army. Levi smiled as he counted down with his fingers. Three, two, one. As soon as the countdown ended, a loud rumbling could be heard from outside. Thump! Thump! The footsteps of a thousand men made it seem like the earth was a drum as the bass vibrated in everyone's chest. In the next moment, Alfie barged inside with his soldiers. When Richard saw that, he grunted in shock and fainted right away. Right then, the Caesar family had officially suffered an overwhelming defeat. The Protector Chapter 590 Patrick kneeled on the ground. Thump! Thump! At the same time, the few hundred members of the Caesar family kneeled down. As well. Even the military is here. We're screwed. Wait, no. They are the Iron Brigade, for F*** CK's sake. To the people of Arudaya, 
the Iron Brigade was even more powerful, and their responsibilities were even more sacred than that of the military. They are the true guardians of our country. How unlucky can we get? Meanwhile, Meredith and Robert exchanged a glance and broke into a huge grin. Because they were overjoyed. They recognized that from this point onwards, the black family standing in the South City was secured, and no one would dare to hurt them any more. Captain Steele, you're here. The black family extends our heartfelt thanks to you. I thank you, on behalf of the entire black family. Meredith and Robert cried tears of joy as they almost kneeled in gratitude. Ha ha, no worries. We were marching in the wilderness when we heard that the black family is in trouble, so we decided to come and check it out. Alfie smiled. And said. Hearing that, the Caesar family almost lost their minds. Who are you kidding? Who even marches when they're fully armed? It's so obvious that they have their targets on us. At that moment, Russell stepped forward and saluted Alfie. Captain Steele. Alfie patted Russell's shoulders and chuckled. I heard about what you did, and I must say that I'm impressed. You defied the Caesar family just to stand up for yourself. Russell smiled awkwardly and replied, I can't really offer any help, so I need to. Thank you for lending a helping hand to the Black family. Russell then saluted him once again. The Black family thought that Alfie was just being polite, but later on, they realized that Alfie genuinely admired Russell. That means Alfie helped us out of respect to Russell. Maybe they really were just marching, but Russell must have been there driving. Forced to come here nonetheless. Meredith immediately explained, Captain Steele, we have misunderstood. Russell. We thought that he was just being reckless when he slapped the head of the Caesar family in a fit of rage. But we realize now that he's a very sensible and thoughtful person. Of course, he wasn't scared of the Caesar family because he has the support from a well-respected man like you. Robert chimed in. That's right. Russell, we misunderstood you. You were right all along. The Caesar family can't oppress us just because they're more powerful than us. We need to stand up for ourselves. Meredith bowed down. Russell, I apologize for slapping you for no legitimate reason. Grandma, um. Russell had an awkward expression. That incident has nothing to do with this, right? Alfie was dumbfounded as well. That incident isn't even related to Russell. What are you even talking about? Meredith suddenly thought of something. Russell is now the deputy chief, so does that mean that Tim, Stephen, and the rest came just for him? Mr. Cronin, Mr. McKay, thank you for helping out the Black family. Please take care of Russell too. Meredith smiled and said. Robert grinned too. Mr. Cronin, Mr. McKay, you must have come here for Russell's sake, and it seems like you value him a lot. We will teach him well and make sure he doesn't disappoint you. Bailey was on the verge of tears as well. Russell really is the hope of the black family. All the powerful figures in the South City came just for him. Russell really is amazing. All the leaders came just for his sake. Russell is so cool. No wonder he slapped the head of the Caesar family, yet he still seemed unfazed, who knew that he had it all planned out. The Protector Chapter 591 However, the South City's leaders' expressions darkened when they heard that. Tim, Stephen, and the other leaders were rendered speechless. What's happening here? Didn't we come because the God of War asked us to? What does that have to do with that Russell guy? We don't even know him, so naturally, we wouldn't offer him any help. What is the Black family even thinking? They must have misunderstood something. As the Black family expressed their gratitude, Tim and the rest looked. Embarrassed. They stared at Levi, and he just nodded understandingly. 
At that, Tim declared, that's right. I admire Russell a lot, and the Black family. Represents excellence in the South City by contributing to society tirelessly. I definitely felt the need to step up when you are in trouble. Stephen chimed in. Well said. Russell really is an amazing young man. We like him a lot. After they sung their praises, Russell blushed furiously out of embarrassment. I didn't even do anything, but my family keeps thinking otherwise. He snuck a look at Levi and saw that Levi didn't seem to be angry, so he breathed a sigh of relief. On the other hand, the Black family was excited beyond belief. Firstly, the Caesar family's onslaught is successfully thwarted. Secondly, all the powerful figures are praising our boy, Russell. This is such a blessing to the Black family. Long live the Black family. With Russell here, the Black family will stand tall for years to come. I now formally declare Russell as the next head of the family. Right then and there, Meredith appointed Russell as the new head of the Black family in front of everyone without any regard for Bailey and the rest. Even so, Bailey and the rest didn't complain about it. With Russell's capabilities, he will bring the Black family to greater heights, and we'll all benefit from that. Mr. Cronin, what do you think about that? Meredith asked. Tim smiled and replied, that works. He's competent enough to take on that role. The Black family cheered excitedly, but Caitlin and Aaron couldn't bring themselves to feel happy about it. They only managed to stand up for themselves when Hades and Tim arrived, both of whom had intimidated the Caesar family. Naturally, they thought that Levi was the one who planned this, so a sense of pride overwhelmed them as they wanted to brag about their son-in-law to everyone. However, in the end, Levi had nothing to do with it, and instead, Russell was the one who took the credit. It was only natural they couldn't accept that fact. Levi came in and turned the tide of battle, but in the end, it had nothing to do with him. I, I don't know what to say about this. Zoe felt the same way as them. She thought that Levi led them all to victory, but the credit was forcefully snatched away from him. Meanwhile, Abigail couldn't take it anymore. Levi was the mastermind behind this. Russell had nothing to do with it. Grandma, Levi was the one who called them. Undeniably, Russell deserves some credit, but Levi should be the one recognized for it, Abigail said to everyone in a huff and shocked everyone. It did seem like Levi was the one calling the shots back then. In hindsight, Russell had nothing to do with it. Bailey retorted out of displeasure, Abigail, what are you talking about? Mr. Cronin and Mr. McKay admitted that they came for Russell's sake, so what does it have to do with Levi? Abigail snickered. Uncle, tell me then, why did Levi make the call earlier? The Protector Chapter 592 Bailey smiled and said, the answer is simple. Since Russell is unwilling to show off, I attributed everything to Levi's efforts. Can't you tell? Yes, that's right. Given how Russell normally keeps a low profile, he'll definitely not be interested in something so showy. Leaving to Levi was only natural. Meredith and Robert nodded in agreement before responding with, That's right. Abigail. Russell is normally quite circumspect, so he just let Levi have the limelight this time. Everyone else murmured in agreement. You guys exclaimed Abigail in exasperation. She was pissed off as this was. Obviously Levi's doing. However, not only did the Black family refuse all good intentions, but they also even insisted that Russell did this while deliberately letting Levi take the limelight. Do you have any idea, retorted Abigail, but before she could complete her sentence, she was interrupted by Levi. Abigail let it go. It doesn't matter who did it, he said before continuing. 
The Black Family crisis has been averted, and we should now focus on the Caesar family. Hearing Levi's reminder, everyone bristled. The Caesar family was their main concern, after all. What? stammered Patrick. Now that all eyes were on him, he was afraid. You may set foot in South City, but don't think of getting away so easily. Responded Levi with a smile. Yes, that's right, piped Alfie. Nobody will let you. I. I. I'm leaving it all up to you, stammered Patrick once more. He lay on the ground and dared not lift his head. I've heard that the Caesar family wishes to contribute to the development of South City. How about this then give us half of your family fortune to be invested in the city's growth? What? There was a collective roar of disbelief from the Caesar family the moment Levi uttered those words. They looked at him like he was crazy. Half of the family fortune? Were they trying to ruin the Caesar family? Don't worry. I'm not done yet. I did say it was easy to come here but hard to leave, no? If you want to leave, we want ten million each in payment. Surely this is reasonable. Levi smirked as he uttered this. What? One million per person. Patrick balked at the figure, feeling like his eyes were about to pop. There were nine hundred people in total, which added up to ten million each. It was a whopping nine billion. Yet, Levi was far from done. Wait, there's even more. The Black family had suffered a lot of mental distress. Let's put that to about one billion then. Patrick huffed, feeling his blood boil. Ten billion and half of the family fortune, they might as well ask for our lives. By the way, couldn't you at least bring some gifts to South City for charity? I hear that some projects could use your help, so why don't you take up some of those? Levi smiled again, after saying his piece. Patrick felt like his soul was about to leave his body out of anger. This is preposterous. A few of Tim Cronin's associates responded immediately, saying, That's right. There are seven of such projects, and they're short of about seven hundred million. Smiling still, Levi said, This amount shouldn't be of any trouble to you, right? And no, it's no problem, replied Patrick, stuttering. Right now, he truly wished to die. In this dispute, the Black family emerged victorious, while the Caesar family suffered a crushing defeat. This was a massive blow to the Caesar family. My word, look at your son-in-law in action. It's like he's truly in charge here. Came Pamela's disdainful remark, directed at Caitlin. Yes, this was clearly Russell's decision, so why is Levi showing off here? Isn't it so? He's here pushing his luck, so I'm really not used to seeing this. He has his uses, I guess. If Russell had solved it, he probably wouldn't have even raised the issue of mental distress and that hefty sum. Only Levi would be that shameless. The Black family ridiculed him, one after the other. However, since Levi did have his merits, they did not give him that much flack. After everyone left, Meredith and Robert embraced Russell. Oh Russell, they cried, you truly are the greatest pride of the Black family. The Protector Chapter 593 The two cried with joy, and shed tears of happiness. Our family is so lucky to have someone like Russell. Everyone looked at Russell with adoration and admiration. From today onwards, Russell became the most important member of the Black family. He would be the cornerstone of the Black family's development in the future. Meredith directed her gaze at Levi and remarked, Well, you deserve some credit. As well since you were at the forefront with Russell. Of course, some credit had to be given to Russell's upstanding character. He was approachable and treated everyone in the family justly. Even though we saw you 
as just average, Levi, Russell convinced us to treat you well and value your presence, she thought. In the future, Levi, you should learn more from Russell. He was very optimistic about having you around. Follow him, and you'll turn out fine. While she was obviously praising some of Levi's merits, it became mostly praise for Russell as well. Meanwhile, Russell felt embarrassed and lowered his head. He had not dared to look at Levi. His fists were tightly clenched, and he secretly wished the ground would swallow him whole. Even Abigail felt slightly ashamed. Russell was being praised to high heaven, but only if they knew he had nothing to do with it. Meredith then turned to address both Caitlin and Aaron. I know you have been wronged in the last few days, she said, but Russell values the both of you. You can always call on the Black family if you need us in the future. Thank you, Mom and Dad, replied Caitlin and Aaron. If you want to thank someone, thank Russell, said Meredith haughtily. With that, Aaron and Caitlin made their way to Russell, thanking their nephew. Profusely. Aunt, uncle, really, there's no need, said Russell, putting a stop to the display. Immediately. If he made Levi angry, there would be hell to pay. Just then, a car drove into the compound. Logan and Jenny had arrived. Earlier, when the Black family was facing trouble, they disappeared without a trace. But when the problem had been resolved, they appeared out of nowhere. Remember that issue involving Grandpa and Grandma? I summoned all those important people. My father and the rest had to plead with them so hard before. They relented, said Logan, without any shame. Hey? That was you. Meredith was stunned. Wasn't it Russell? Murmurs came from everyone in the room. Russell immediately jumped in and clarified, saying, that really had nothing to do with me. You heard him, replied Logan smugly. Meredith tried to recall the earlier scene. True enough, when she brought up Russell to Cronin and the others, something was odd about the way they looked. How embarrassing. Come to think of it, it was not because of Russell. Except for the Zacks family, who had a political background, nobody could have convinced these other bigwigs to act. Oh Logan, you truly were a savior at our most dire moments, exclaimed Meredith as she hugged Logan. The others also thanked Logan, eyeing him enviously. Oh, to have had such power. Logan felt a little embarrassed. Actually, the credit doesn't belong to me alone. He said. Russell also had a hand in this, from bringing in Captain Steel and everyone else. That's all his doing. Russell was about to protest, but seeing the look in Levi's eyes, he could only hold his tongue. However, he and Abigail looked at Logan, feeling upset. When the Black family was in distress, he kept his distance. Now that the danger had passed, he came to steal the credit. What the F asterisk CK did this have to do with him at all? But this was a world where people like these existed. They ignored those in hardship but only showed up to receive the credit when work was done, though. Obviously not by them. Well then, you and Russell are the biggest heroes of the Black family, said. Meredith as she laughed gaily. The Protector Chapter 594 Logan was enjoying the moment, but Russell was embarrassed. There was a sharp contrast between the two men. Suddenly, Logan spotted Levi and could not help but smile. Levi, you have to have some credit as well, said Logan. Were it not for you fighting against the Caesar family, we would not be able to have this show of strength. Yes, if it weren't for you picking a fight, how would Grandma and Grandpa know? That my Logan was so great, tittered Jenny unabashedly. She decided to capitalize on this as well. Abigail, on the other hand, could no longer take this 
I'm not here to rain on anyone's parade, but what does this have to do with? Either of you, Jenny and Logan, questioned Abigail. If credit were being given to Russell, she could tolerate it. But seeing how Jenny and Russell came to steal all the credit was beyond her capacity to tolerate. Logan looked unhappy. Abigail, what is the meaning of this? How is this not related to me? asked Logan. Did I not bring in Mr. Cronin and Mr. McKay? Without them, how would this crisis be resolved? Jenny also sneered at her, What do you mean, Abigail? What do I mean? You know exactly what I mean, Abigail snickered and continued, Where were you earlier? Are you only here now that the matter is resolved to steal all the credit? Abigail had always had a sharp tongue, so she would say whatever needed to be said. Abigail, are you implying that the leaders we invited had nothing to do with us? roared Logan, raising his voice at her. Yes, you can't just make blatant accusations like that, Abigail, yelled Jenny. What do you mean by us stealing all the credit? The corners of Abigail's lips were raised in a mocking smile. Didn't you say that? You invited all the leaders? In that case, why don't we call them to verify this? Well, both Jenny and Logan were taken aback. They both swallowed audibly. And had a nervous expression on their faces. All right, Abigail, think about it for a moment. Russell may have been amazing. But Mr. Cronin needn't have shown up in person. Logan's father and grandfather fought on the front lines with him, so it must have been no easy feat to ask. Meredith's timely intervention made Jenny and Logan breathe a sigh of relief. If Abigail had insisted on making that call, they would have been exposed. But thank goodness Meredith was here. Grandma and Grandpa, I've booked us a table at the Wonder Hotel to celebrate this victory. Why don't we all go and make merry, asked Logan. Meredith nodded and replied, Splendid, I was just thinking about it. Who knew? You had this arranged already. I'm so pleased that to have both of you in the family Logan and Jenny. All of you youngsters, learn from this. Yes, especially your son-in-law, Caitlin. See to it that he learns to be less harsh. Abigail snorted coldly. Meanwhile, Caitlin and Aaron looked at each other, their expressions dark. As always, their status in the Black family was still low. They could no longer rely on Levi. It was up to Zoe now. In the evening, the Black family arrived at the Wonder Hotel. At the dinner table, Caitlin and Aaron practically did not exist. The two wanted so badly to be acknowledged by the old couple. Finally, Meredith's gaze fell on Zoe. How have you been doing lately? asked Meredith gently. Caitlin knew the opportunity had arrived and was prepared to seize it. Mother. Don't you know how well she's doing? She's the director of the Oriental Star. Group. The market value of the company is worth almost five billion. Have you? Seen the two very popular movies recently? The ones starring Helena. Yes, I know the ones by Helena. Zoe's company produced those movies. Zoe, I love Helena. Can you please help me get an autographed photo? Everyone showered envious praise on Zoe. The Protector Chapter 595 What? A market value of 5 billion. Meredith and Robert were even more surprised. The Blacks were considered a large family, but their portfolios only added up to about 10 billion altogether. Is Zoe's net worth going to surpass the Blacks? That's not all, Zoe's company is also trying to penetrate the electronics market. Aaron carried on joyfully. What the upper echelons of Northampton actually intend is for Morris and Oriental Star to make up for the need in the electronics market. Since the departure of Triple Group, that is, Zoe's future is potentially limitless. She could finally hold her head up high in the Black family. That's great, remarked Meredith and the others, 
their eyes fiercely lit. She immediately gave Zoe recognition. After all, she was also a member of the Black family. Russell's foresight was correct after all it was necessary to treat Zoe's family a little better. Zoe, if you need anything, just let us know. The Black family is your strongest backing, promised Meredith. Zoe smiled and said, Grandpa and Grandma, the company is going to take its business to South City. When that happens, I might have to call in a few favors. The distribution of the Morris Group in Northampton had been completed. Thus, the next step was to enter South City. Oriental Star Group was the vanguard of this operation. Really? That's wonderful. Robert and Meredith looked at each other in awe. If Zoe owned such a large company that was interested in penetrating South City's market, it would really benefit the Black family. Unlike the Lopez family, they were not trying to claim Zoe for themselves. What they wanted was a mutually beneficial relationship. The Black family could support Zoe, and Zoe could support the Black family in return. Don't worry, Zoe. Rest assured, when you come to South City, we will pave the way for you. Russell will be able to quell other troubles in your path as well. Since Logan is with the Ministry of Commerce, he will be able to help you. Your sister is also the Vice President of the New Alliance Bank. Many problems can be resolved with ease, promised Meredith. Thank you very much, everyone. Initially, Zoe was worried about how the subject matter should be broached. But now, it was much better since Meredith took the initiative to propose. Come on, let me propose a toast to our double happiness the Black family is. No longer in distress, and Zoe will be expanding to South City. Robert raised his glass. After finishing a glass, Levi turned to Zoe and said, You're coming here to grow. So who would dare stop you? I doubt you need anyone's help. Levi desperately wanted to protect Zoe, so he felt that they didn't need anyone. Else. Bailey, who happened to overhear this, sneered, What's this? Dismissing the. Black family's help. What's going on? inquired Meredith. Mom and Dad, Levi just said he didn't need our help, remarked Bailey as he gave Levi a cold stare. Aaron and Caitlin's expressions shifted immediately. It was not easy to get the black family to help Zoe. Was this supposed to be bad? On what grounds did he have to refuse their help? Meredith and Robert looked at Levi unhappily. You said that? Yes, I did. My wife does not need any help because she is perfectly capable. If you need help from Zoe, just say so. But we don't need your assistance. Answered Levi in all seriousness. As he said this, Caitlin and Robert huffed. They were seething with anger. Meredith and Robert's expressions had turned dark. What is the meaning of this? Are you looking down on us? Are you implying that? We, the Black family, need to curry favor with Zoe instead? There was a loud bang. It was Meredith who slammed her fist on the table. Shocking everyone. The Protector Chapter 596 Meredith hissed. Immediately, silence befell the room. Everyone was frightened and dared not even breathe. Right then, Meredith did not stop the barrage of questions she had for Levi. What does Zoe's company have to do with you? Are you in any position to decide for her? You really think you're all that, don't you? Others had also chimed in angrily, yes, she owns the company. How does that concern you? What charade are you trying to pull here? You're obviously underqualified here, so shut the hell up. At best, you're a kept man. Levi's words had drawn the black family's ire. Zoe, hearing the commotion, tried to pour oil over troubled waters. All right. Grandma and Grandpa. Don't mind him, she soothed. 
he meant well and just. Did not wish to trouble you, that's all. Meredith stopped but retorted sarcastically, well, I'm sure he thinks that way. Logan then looked at Levi and smirked, have you ever considered how unworthy you are of Zoe? Jenny echoed her husband's words immediately, that's right. Zoe's company has a market value of five billion and is backed by the Morris Group. What do you have? Yeah, it's obvious. In the Black family, the both of you are not equal in status. The dinner was very unpleasant, with Meredith looking sour the entire time. Zoe, stay for a moment, alone. I have something to ask you, said Meredith. After the event, Zoe went up to Meredith alone, nervously. What's wrong? Grandma. Zoe, I have a personal question to ask, said Meredith, as she gently stroked. Zoe's hair. Oh? What is it? replied Zoe, puzzled. All this time, have you not planned to have kids with Levi? queried Meredith. Upon hearing the question, a hint of bashfulness flitted across Zoe's features. Not yet, Grandma. For now, we're focusing on our careers. No, I think you've misunderstood. I'm asking you in all honesty have you slept? With Levi yet, asked Meredith again, more directly this time. W. Watt, stammered Zoe. She was stunned, and her face was a deep shade of red. Out of everyone, she did not expect her grandmother to ask such questions. Be honest. What is the situation like between the both of you? questioned Meredith. Zoe felt her breath quicken. Grandma, he hasn't touched me yet, came Zoe's truthful answer. All right, I understand, nodded Meredith. After Zoe left, Meredith summoned Robert, Bailey, and some of the others. I just found out Zoe and Levi are only man and wife in name but are neither in reality, said Meredith. Mom, you can't possibly mean that, Bailey trailed off. Everyone understood what she meant. Yes, that's right. I want them to divorce and for Zoe to remarry, exclaimed Meredith truthfully. Bailey, Pamela, and everyone else present raised their hands in agreement. They should have divorced ages ago. Levi is obviously unworthy of Zoe. What? A joke. Yeah, we don't like Levi. He's incompetent and has a fiery temper. Meredith nodded and continued, Well, I don't like him either. Before this, I couldn't interfere because she wasn't a member of the family. But things are different now. She's an important part of the Black family, and I can't let this slide. She needs to divorce him, and I will find her suitable in-laws. Yes, Zoe is growing as a person, and Levi will only hold her back, echoed. Robert. How about this? To prove that Zoe is still untouched, you will need to take her to the hospital for a comprehensive checkup tomorrow. I won't be at ease until I see the report, ordered Meredith. The Protector Chapter 597 Meredith was still a bit anxious over what Zoe said. She needs to go for an examination, only then will I be relieved. Later on, she could arrange a suitor for Zoe after the report proved her virginity. That way, the groom's family would not have any concern in regards to this. Mom, Dad. There might be a problem, said Pamela hesitantly. What would that be? asked Meredith, looking over at her. If you get a divorce, will Levi agree to it? Pamela asked. Everyone immediately spoke up, echoing the sentiment. Levi will definitely not agree. Why would he give her up? Robert snickered and retorted, who said we need his consent for the divorce? Just hand in the cert after it's done. This matter needn't involve him at all. Everyone laughed. With the reach of the black family, quietly arranging a divorce was a walk in the park. Until then, Levi would only realize he was divorced when he received his divorce certificate. Mom, 
shouldn't we inform Caitlin and Aaron about this, asked Jeremy. Worriedly. You can go ahead and bring them here. Soon, Aaron and his wife arrived at a complete loss. Then Meredith filled them in on the details. When Meredith finished, the couple looked at each other, dumbfounded. I'd suggest you listen to me regarding this matter. Soon, Zoe's net worth will be tens of billions, and Levi will become her weakness. All unsavory incidents like going to prison or bullying her sister-in-law will be exposed. This will destroy Zoe. After hearing what Meredith had to say, the couple sighed. They had never considered this problem. With Zoe's personal development becoming better and better, her momentum was strong, impeccably so. Levi, on the other hand, was a ticking time bomb waiting to explode. The one who would be hurt the most was Zoe. Furthermore, Levi was far from worthy of Zoe. Just listen to me, urged Meredith. I'll tell you the truth. Their divorce will be good for Zoe and the Black family. To prove our sincerity, if they divorce, we will immediately invest two billion in Zoe, said Meredith sincerely. The couple looked at each other again before deciding. All right, Mom and Dad. We'll listen to you. They could not see the harm in this. Receiving the approval of the Black family and helping Zoe be rid of Levi was something they dared not even think about. As for Levi, I will give him a settlement sum said Meredith decisively. The next day, the Black family collectively went to the hospital for Zoe's examination. Levi attended as well. By the afternoon, the results were out. Meredith looked at Zoe's report with joy. The girl was right Levi had not touched her at all. This is splendid, she exclaimed with excitement. Bailey, arrange for their divorce at once, urged Meredith. I've already made the necessary arrangements, Mom and Dad. The Civil Affairs Bureau did not even require the marriage certificate or household registration. Said Bailey gleefully. Perfect. An hour later, Bailey produced the two divorce certificates. Haha, <laughs> this is wonderful. Robert and Meredith smiled. Everyone in the Black family was happy. After all, this was very beneficial to them. This matter is finally resolved, said Caitlin and Aaron as they collectively breathed a sigh of relief. But the pair did feel sorry for Levi since he did not perform too badly throughout this period. After that, Meredith gathered everyone around her. Go and bring Levi to me. I have something to announce. But keep Zoe away. For now, ordered Meredith. She would not announce this in front of Zoe. The Protector Chapter 598 When Levi arrived at the Black family's foyer, he noticed that something felt off. Did you ask for me, queried Levi. Meredith and Robert shared a look before announcing, yes, to tell you. Something. You and Zoe are now divorced. As soon as the news came out, Levi was stunned. Abigail and Russell who did not know of the plot, were also shocked. What? Divorced? When did this happen? Levi quickly regained his composure. I divorced Zoe. That's funny, but how? Was I unaware of this, he asked as a matter of factly. With that, Bailey tossed the divorce certificate at Levi. Levi picked it up and had a look. There was no doubting the authenticity of the certificate as it was also stamped with an official seal. This is hilarious. How can the couple involved not know about this? It's clear now, right? You and Zoe are divorced, so stop pestering her in the future. She no longer has anything to do with you, said Meredith smugly. After a while, Levi burst into peal after peal of wild laughter. Meredith and the others were surprised. What was he laughing at? Levi held the certificate and snickered, I have a question to ask. Shouldn't he? Divorce only occur with the consent of both parties? When was my marriage? 
controlled by other people? As he said this, a violent, domineering aura filled the space. Suddenly, the hall was filled with the sounds of people gasping for air, as if an immense pressure had entered the room. The air was heavy, in fact, suffocating. Levi was furious. Fortunately, he had restraint. But with his murderous aura, no one in the room would remain unscathed. Meredith and Robert were both shocked as they were rooted to the ground like corpses, unable to move. At this moment, they felt like they were in a trance. For some reason, it was as if they were on the battlefield. Standing in front of them was an invincible, unchallenged and furious god of war. He had the aura of someone who felled thousands of enemy troops alone. Who dares challenge me? I am the god of war. What? Why can't we decide? You are unworthy of Zoe, so naturally, we had to. Take charge, retorted Bailey, squaring up to Levi. Meredith and Robert eventually came to their senses and responded as well. We are Zoe's elders, said Meredith. Who's to say that we can't decide for her? Of course, we knew you wouldn't divorce her, Levi. You wouldn't leave even if it meant death, so we had to pull a few strings. Divorce or not, we want you gone. Pamela and the others also joined in. In this marriage, Levi was only a tool to be manipulated, with no decision-making. Power to be held. What's more? Zoe's parents are here. They consented to this too. If you don't believe me, go ahead and ask them. At the mention of them, Aaron and Caitlin shifted uncomfortably. After all, what they did was wrong. Hence, they felt guilty towards Levi. Upon hearing this, Levi looked at the two of them and sneered, Mom, Dad, did you both agree to it then? The couple looked uneasy and did not dare look Levi in the eye. However, they did not and reply, Yes, we did. All right then, I know now, said Levi. Meredith snickered, I told you everyone agrees that you are both divorced. Yes, you are not good enough for her. Get a divorce now, echoed the junior. Members of the Black family. Abigail and Russell, however, took Levi's side. No, we do not agree to this. Levi waved a hand and said, I don't care for your opinions. The question is, did Zoe agree to this? Saying that, Levi surveyed the room and asked, Where is Zoe? The Protector Chapter 599 Meredith shook her head and said, Let me tell you, Zoe did agree to this. She merely didn't have the heart to tell you. That's why she isn't here right now. Yes, she agreed. How could you get the certificate otherwise, echoed everyone. Else. No, I refuse to believe this. Tell Zoe to tell me this in person, yelled Levi, his eyes turning red. Levi Garrison, roared Logan. Don't think for a second that we're unaware of your schemes. You're unwilling to divorce and you want to beg for her back. Don't even bother coming here to see Zoe, said Logan firmly. Yes, that's right. With us here, don't even think about seeing her, sneered. Meredith. Now that the divorce certificate has been issued, and you're fully aware of the situation, leave. And stop being delusional, but Zoe is out of your league, said. Robert mercilessly. Meredith shot a look, and Pamela stepped forward to present Levi with a check. The Black family will not let you divorce in vain, of course. Here is your compensation of ten million. Again, Levi was stunned. Damn, I thought the Lopez family was heartless enough, but the Black family is. Even worse. Ten million to buy back his marriage to Zoe. This is complete bullsh asterisk t. Seeing Levi's expression, Pamela thought he was faking it. Stop pretending and take it, she urged. Ten million is enough to last you a lifetime. 
Abruptly, Pamela stuffed the check into Levi's hand. The onlookers laughed, seeing how Levi accepted the check. He was a plebeian, for sure. Ten million was enough to win him over. I told you he wasn't worthy of Zoe, sneered Logan. Abigail and Russell watched the scene unfurling in front of them, completely. Dumbfounded. What was the Black family thinking, letting Levi divorce Zoe? Did they not know what they've missed? Did they also have no brains? Levi, who did so much for them, and yet they did not notice anything at all? Without him, the Black family could have been destroyed. Why were they all so confused? Abigail and Russell were both so anxious they could cry. They're all idiots. Hurry up and leave already. Don't even think of setting foot beyond these. Doors, urged Logan. Levi snickered and replied, very well. With that, he turned around and left. Wait, Levi. Don't go. Abigail and Russell tried to chase after him, but they were. Stopped. Don't you dare. Pamela and Jenny laughed. Here I was, thinking that this kid had something in. Him. I didn't expect him to just take the check and leave. Indeed. I was expecting him to tear up the check, said Logan scornfully. Who? Knew he would be that spineless. Can you blame him? It's ten million. How could he possibly give up that sum? Laughter was heard coming from the Black family. Their impression of Levi had truly hit rock bottom. Unbeknownst to them, however, Levi threw the check into a nearby bin after he left the residence. Did they think he would be swayed by money? This scene was discovered by a servant of the family, who quietly ran forward. And fished out the check from the bin. In the foyer, Abigail was questioning Meredith. Grandma, Grandpa, does Zoe know about all this? Meredith smiled and replied, it wouldn't matter even if she did. Levi had already taken his copy of the certificate. You have to ask for Zoe's consent at least, cried Abigail, close to tears. By the way, Abigail, you are forbidden from telling Zoe about this for now. I'll tell her later, asserted Meredith. In the meantime, Russell was already sneaking away. No, Zoe must know about this, he muttered and ran off to tell Zoe. The Protector Chapter 600 At this time, Zoe had already started working. She was making preparations for Oriental Star's entry into South City. Little did she know that all these happened in that short amount of time. Now, the Black family would have everything sorted out for her. She would never be allowed to leave, let alone see Levi. There were ten people guarding the door. The moment they saw Russell heading towards them, they held him back. Get out of my way. I want to see Zoe, said Russell coldly. Having noticed that as was Russell Black, they had no choice but to let him in. Russell, why are you here? Zoe looked up and saw Russell standing there. She could not help but be surprised. Zoe, something terrible happened, said Russell urgently. Grandpa and Grandma went through divorce proceedings for you and Levi. Russell recounted all that happened in her absence. The news struck Zoe like a bolt from the blue. What? I divorced Levi? How did I not know of this? Zoe slumped to the ground. She then understood why Meredith had asked her such personal questions and even asked her to go for an examination at the hospital. Now they have notified Levi and driven him away, announced Russell. Zoe shook her head, impossible. As long as I don't consent, there is no divorce. Zoe, while it is true that this is your marriage, but after you're married, your families become a part of the deal, said Russell helplessly. Their opinions hold equal weight, unfortunately. Plus, I think Levi is very upset. Zoe burst into tears as she could only think about how sad Levi would be right. Now. No. I wanna find Levi, cried Zoe. Okay, 
I'll take you. With that, Russell successfully whisked her away. Zoe managed to reach Levi on his phone. Upon seeing him, she rushed into his arms, crying bitterly. Why did you agree? This is between the both of us. What does it have to do with them? asked Zoe, choking back tears. Levi stroked her hair in silence. I'm sorry. My family keeps hurting you again and again. I'm truly sorry. Zoe was even apologizing to him. Levi smiled and replied, It's all right. Knowing that you care about me is enough. Then why did you agree to a divorce and even took the certificate with you? We'll remarry right away. I'll get rid of this right now, said Zoe, ripping the certificate apart. Levi smiled meaningfully, Do you remember when I said I wanted to reorganize? A wedding ceremony for you. Of course, I remember. I never forgot, said Zoe tearfully. Well, it just so happened that now, I can court you again. And then we can get married again, replied Levi with a grin. Immediately, Zoe understood why he left. He wanted to marry her all over again, to follow through on that promise he made. Her. Zoe wiped away her tears. Well, you can court me again, but promise me you won't go after other women. Zoe loved Levi very much. She already loved him then, but it would only grow deeper now. Even if Levi could not bear the brunt of her love, she had made her choice. What she chose was for a lifetime, and nobody could stop them. I promise. That wedding will tell everyone that you are the most beautiful woman in the world, exclaimed Levi, hugging her. Seeing this scene, Russell smiled. The black family could still be salvaged. Just then, the sound of screeching tires was heard as cars stopped in front of them, one by one. Levi Garrison. What are you doing, still pestering Zoe, roared Logan. In mere seconds, the black family members rushed out of the cars in rapid succession.